Hello, and welcome to Between Two Turns Styles with Mike Provenzale and Tony Geezy. I'm Mike Provenzale, and this is our special auction edition. We've got our fall memorabilia auction closing this evening. Tony, are you excited? I'm always excited. That is one of the truest statements you've ever said. <laughs> you put so much time and effort into this. We bring it in, we write it, do all this work, and now you see everything kind of... Kinda. So, I've seen you excited over ketchup packets, so I how would you been. put your excitement if you had it at 1 for ketchup packets, 10, Kevin Garnett winning his NBA title? Anything's possible, Anything Mike. Anything is possible. All right, a 10 of 10. So, tonight, extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time. You have to have your bids in before then. You can view and bid. You may be watching this on our Facebook page. You can go over to ha.com to bid, view this while you're bidding on the recent bid activity screen, which Tony has open right there. That is what you're looking at, right? I 100% am looking at the bids, I promise. Not, uh, no. maybe some preseason basketball? Uh, that, no, there. I'm not. I swear to God. I'm, I'm focused and I'm ready to roll. You I look can't focused. Wait. Thank you. Well, thanks for dressing up. Thanks for dressing <laughs> Anytime. up. Anytime. Appreciate that. Anytime. For you? Uh, of course. Yeah. It's not for me, it's for them, for the people out there. Thank you for joining us. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you want an appraisal, you have a question about an item in the auction, we'd love to help you out. You can message us on Facebook and uh, our muscular assistant Magnus sitting in the back will assist with those and call the questions out. And we're gonna have all of our experts on screen tonight talking about some of their favorite items in the auction. You know, funny thing, I was home last week and my mom actually asked, who is Magnus? Is that Who's funny? Magnus? I swear to God, she wanted to know and I said, <laughs> well, I, I, I can't tell you that, Mom. Well, but she wanted to know who that was. Magnus is a longtime employee of Heritage uh, who wears a lot of hats. Yes. A lot of hats. Yes. Does and, a phenomenal uh, job. Yeah, absolutely. Security and, uh, and produces this too. Can bench press Tony. I've seen yes. it happen. <laughs> Tony, do you think you could bench press Magnus? I I think so. I think so. We'll have to check that out later. <laughs> but back to what our focus. Fall memorabilia auction closing tonight. We've got session one closing tonight. Session two is tomorrow. More great items closing tomorrow. And we're going to talk about some of our favorites, some of the hot items, some of the unique, interesting items. And there's a lot of them. How many? You're not great at math. 1,700? I don't know. What, uh, what is the a lot total? Sure, let's say 1,700. Uh, let's can we leave find math that out? to the eggheads. Oh! 1,201, okay. says Magnus. It felt He's like that. Th it felt like that's how many we had to write <laughs> to get this done, though. Um, so it's an exciting time for all of us. And we're going to take you through to extended bidding, past extended bidding. We've got some special treats for you coming up later. But first... Delectable treat right now. One of our experts. Let's bring him out. Mr. Nick Sapero. Nick. He knows everything here, too. Everything. Not just cards. He knows High memorabilia praise. as well. No pressure. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> Nick, as you can see, is one of our more fashionable experts. And uh, he's putting that on display and putting Tony to shame. I love this shirt. This guy, has he, he breaks out the vintage shirts. And there's so many times I'm like, I remember that shirt. Or there's sometimes times where... your age showing. I, yeah. It is, it is. But oh, the I shirt's older that. than me, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan Ryan, and I just, oh, that's, that's just a great, great... And we've I got a few vintage it. jerseys older than... Uh, Tony. A few. <laughs> uh, only a few. Do they go that far back? Only I don't know. Believe it. Believe it. Uh, Nick, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nick is one of our card experts, but also a memorabilia expert. He does a little bit of everything, also wearing a lot of hats. But no hats tonight, I see. No hats. All right, yeah. all right, Left all right. it at home. I know. Uh, uh, so, without further ado, let's let's get started. Let's break it out. Sure. Uh, I think you've got a Von Miller jersey there. I you got a Von about? Miller jersey. Let's 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 look at it. Yeah, please. Definitely not light use on this one. Definitely the heaviest used Von Miller I've seen. So we have a nice game worn Von Miller jersey. Wow. Probably about the easiest thing in a photo match. Uh, there's a huge there's a huge rip on the back of it. On the top, on the top, there's a huge rip. You have all these hit marks. Another rip down here. Um, just probably the easiest thing to photo match, you know, that we've had. Um, and this was given to uh, Robert Mathis, and uh, and it's inscribed, "My dog, Big Bro, 
Yeah, and a little the same, way, same way you oh. usually greet Toby. Rob, <laughs> Rob, the go Rob the goat, and then love on 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 here. So uh, definitely hard to read the inscription, but definitely you know was probably just scrambling at the end of the game to write right. it down. You know, probably happened on a, on a swap. You know, on a jersey swap. So cool piece. You know, definitely one of my favorites, just because he's an A and M guy. An so. Guy. You know, definitely would be bidding on this, you know, if I had the, the, the opportunity. It's amazing, I mean, just how, that is, it kind of explains how hard they hit. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, when you get those kind of rips on a jersey, I mean, that yeah. is just amazing with that kind of wear. I mean, think yeah. about it, 10 tackles a game, you exactly. know, you know, plus all, all the, all the all, collisions, all the collisions on every down virtually, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, Von Miller is definitely one of, one of the great Aggies, you know, so. And one of the great Broncos, so oh, definitely Super Bowl Super MVP, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was MVP of that yep. Super Bowl. Nice, pulling that out. Well, since you had that, I went ahead and pulled out a uh, Broncos jersey oh, nice. as well. I yeah, love that yeah. patch on there. So this is a 2013 Whew. Walter or Walter Payton, <laughs> Walter Payton, 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 Payton Manny game worn jersey. This is from 2013, his record setting MVP season. Uh, this guy did it all, of course, uh, but his records for yards and touchdowns from that season still stand. And this one is photo matched to a game against the Giants on September 15th. Got the captain's tag right there, and the NFL tags in the collar, and. I mean, anything Peyton Manning is just gold, yeah, pure gold. Ask Tony about that captain's patch. Uh, you know what I was going to say? Look. These have so much personality, these uniforms do, with the captain's patch and the gold stars and even even the, the rubberized NFL shield. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful shirt. And I, I, I like the orange crush when they wore those in the 90s. I, I did. They're so funky. They were beautiful. Um, but it's a very nice look on this jersey, and, and a lot uh, of personality on this jersey. You say uh, a person? I mean, as far as like the it's like the style <laughs> of it. I love the colors. I love the captain's patch, and uh, you got the floppy um, quarterback sleeves, which he was yeah, known course. for, especially early in his career. Free arm movement there. Yeah, see, you're uh, eschewing the uh, floppy arms right there. <laughs> Sorry, it's definitely <laughs> definitely a, a big quarterback's jersey compared it to is. you yeah, know compared gigantic. to it's you a know great point. Uh, yeah, uh, Tony, you oh, think you could. Get in this one? I, I think I, think I, I could I, fit in that one. I think he'll fit in no problem. I don't know if know. I can get it off though, so I may have to keep it. The, the, the newer that, ones, that the, the newer ones will be a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are not coming off. <laughs> All right, Tony, what you got over there? All right. Uh, I got to tell you though. When you had all these boxes set up, I, I, would, I was telling him, it was like Christmas morning at our house. Because my mom would, would be like, these Christmas are for you, the these are for your brother, morning. this is your dad. And it was <laughs> kind of reminded me of Christmas. Tony was that kid who, who, who just uh, screamed uh, when, he got, when he got his Nintendo 64 or something. Knowing the, him the way I <laughs> know right. him, I guarantee most of his presents were open the night before. He is 100% right, and yeah. you're right too. No, we would always, it was always, well, I don't want to ruin any surprises or anything, but we always did it the night before. We, Santa, could, we couldn't wait. Santa we Claus Santa Claus surprise. already delivered your presents by then? We were we were so good that he delivered them early to us. <laughs> I don't know. In Wisconsin, A lump of coal? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe That's some years. Stop. It is pretty close to the North Pole, I'd have to say. <laughs> well, Weather-wise, at least. Beautiful, beautiful jersey. Ray Lewis, 9-11 of 2011. Um, the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Tony, um, is that you that smells or the jersey? <laughs> it's, it's the jersey, I promise. <laughs> uh, we say the game-worn aroma. Uh, <laughs> great use of, just like the Von Miller, a linebacker. Hits hard. These were unwashed, so you can, you know, it's much easier to photo match these, of course, because they were unwashed. Comes from NFL auction um, with the label there, so um, that's a huge help. And you see the R in front of the name. Jamal Lewis was on the team as well, and that's why they have the R prefix. The 911 patch. This one's at 11,500 right now. Um, an incredible number with still time left. It could hit 15,000. Probably one of the nicest Ray Lewis's you could own, and um, you definitive know. Hall of Famer. You know, yeah, absolutely yeah. Hall yeah. of Famer. One of the greatest at his position of all yeah. time. He was, so he was, yeah. And I mean, desirable. The thing is, he could do it all. Great and dancer. 
No. Great. Oh, absolutely great. Did dancer. he win Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> you know what? He should, that would be a great guy. Tony to have perks on. up all of a sudden. I think he. No, I, I think he stars. did. I think you. Yeah. Did he do it? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, it's called the Kirby Dance. Of course. Huh? We'll I think he was in Dancing with later. the Stars. I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me at all. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't. He. If he wasn't on, he should be on. That's a great call. All right, you what? got another jersey oh, from another great defender have. there. Yeah, we're sticking. We're sticking with defense here. We're, we're, the use on these jerseys is oh, just you know that one, amazing. I wrote that one up. I remember that one. That was... So again, uh, Khalil Mack um, with the captain C patch signed on the back. <laughs> The wear on this thing is again incredible. Yeah, look at the shoulders. There. The shoulders, you know, multiple repairs. Um, just you know, that's what you want to see in a jersey. Um, still smells. Um, definitely smells like Tony. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. I washed the shirt. I promise. Yeah. Please. I promise. <laughs> um, but that's you know, why we get so much money for those Tony Yeezy game worn shirts, right there. <laughs> Still so much left in this guy's career, and you know the impact that he's had is, oh is incredible. He's you know, dominant this season. Yeah, you know the Bears look like you know the, the, they have they've found you know their their core piece of their defense. So yeah. and it, you yeah. know that's a once in a generation kind of player, right. and you just these guys just don't come out all that often. Every once in a while you'll find one every ten or fifteen years, but you yeah you I mean he has just changed that organization around and made them. And even successful. even then, the the Raiders jerseys are harder to come by than yeah. any other team. So you know, and and you know, you you'd think it's harder to see wear on on a on a black jersey, but mm -hmm. you know, definitely with with uh, they were definitely playing a team that uh, I I forgot who who they were playing against. With those great it had to be gray face masks, or it could have been his teammates' face masks yeah. too, because a lot of times uh, there's a lot of collisions. December, Christmas Eve versus the Colts. Christmas Eve, oh, the Colts. Yeah. sure. White Robert Mathis. White sure. white jerseys, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's definitely a, a cool piece. You know, definitely if you if you like if you like uh, defensive players, you know this is this is the one that you want to have. Nice thing about defensive players, they show use, they show yeah. wear, they hit marks and that kind of thing. What are you Especially saying about offensive players? players? A, li a little bit lighter use. A little bit lighter. <laughs> Unless you're a, a running back. Tony, Tony, Tony played. Tony's bias. He played linebacker. Yeah, for, right. No, I was for, uh, for, for the Coleman, Wisconsin. I was on the bench, Nick. <laughs> I was on the bench. I kept it nice and warm, though. I believe that. I absolutely. Were you the water boy? Uh, I had to do double duty. <laughs> Bobby Boucher. I was. I didn't hit that hard. <laughs> so we're gonna stick with defense. Gonna go a little further back. Let's say 2001. Troy Polamalu, game worn USC jersey, and. Uh, a lot of great use on this one as well. Another singular player, defensive player, and uh, great hair uh, on him. Great uh, hair. Another almost as good as yours, Mike. Uh, I mean, I'll give it to him. He's, he's had a little bit longer to grow it out. Uh, that's true. Both, that's true. Both showing a little <laughs> bit of gray now. But uh, eight-time Pro Bowler, Defensive Player of the Year in 2010. So great NFL player. And to have a college jersey from a player like that is just outstanding. And he wore this uh, against their rival UCLA at 27-0. Victory for the Trojans, a shutout there. So great defensive game for a great defensive player. He's one of the most popular players I can remember. For sure, yeah. you know, there's people who hate the Steelers, but Palomalu. Who are he was who beloved. Are Let's name names. Who uh, hates no. <laughs> Raiders fans. Nope. Right. <laughs> but enough. I mean, you know, the guy. I mean, he, he was so well loved, and he had such a such a m mild and meek voice. <laughs> when he talked, it was like, that cannot be Troy He's a fan. He, he showed his personality right on the field. He did. Very good point. He's hearing you talk about his meek voice right no, now. I'm Thanks sorry. for watching, Troy. Sorry. I know you're a big fan. <laughs> uh, but hit marks throughout here and uh, you know, a legendary player and a legendary program in USC. Um, so outstanding item. Uh, this should do about five grand tonight. Nice. The Bo Jackson uh, Memphis Chicks jersey just got hit 8,200 for a photo match to Bo Jackson minor league jersey, which is an incredible number. For We're going to talk about that later. Today. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Uh... No, no, no. Spoilers are all right. Spoilers <laughs> Spoiler are alert. All right. Tony, no, what you got over there? The ultimate gunslinger. And no, it's not Brett Favre. I know I'm a Packer wow. fan. Is Joe Kenny? Packle? Me. Joe Packle. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. He's, playing, he's fired. playing today. He's playing. Fired. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Kenny Stabler, uh, 1973 to 75. This was given to a clubhouse attendant at County Stadium in Milwaukee following a game. Um, very unique numbers here. Um, 
back in the in, during this time period, basketball teams tried it, and apparently the Raiders did too. Vinyl numbers, which don't really wash too well after multiple times, they did crack. This this one did not. Um, Stabler, of course, went in the Hall of Fame after he died. He probably could have, should have been a Hall of Famer a little sooner. Uh, he could pull any game out, and he was a, a beloved figure in the in the Raiders' history. Oh, and uh, there's not a lot of Stabler uniforms out there. Raider stuff always does well in auction. There's just not a ton of it out there. It's I great believe. classic look. It, it just is. makes you think of John Facenda's voice. Oh. Uh, Tony, that would fit well with your green this, in, in your this, collection. This would, <laughs> I can't pull off Kenny Stabler, though. I mean, he's, he's the ultimate uh, wild man. Uh, the only <laughs> guy who could go drink all night and do whatever else he did and be ready the next day to <laughs> dominate on the gridiron. I mean, but Tony, you do that before all these shows. <laughs> you spend all day at the bar. Beef jerk? No, beef jerky and Mountain Dew. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, right now, I believe this is at 3,200. It could go significantly higher. Uh, great jersey of a Hall of Fame quarterback and a beloved figure in NFL history. Absolutely. What all do we right. have next? We're going to start with, keep going with defense. Oh, no, Again? Yeah, oh, wow. boy. This one I chose because, so, so Dwight Freeney, legendary Colt, this gave this jersey to Robert Mathis, and you know on oh. on, on here he he signed it. Miss you, uh, being uh, miss you miss being out there with you, fam, and then he signed it. So definitely a cool piece from two of the greatest, you know, Colts out there, um, especially defensive players. And it's, and it's got some nice, it's got it's nice got, helmet marks on yeah. the side. It's, it's, it's got, got a, a nice even. repair. Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely, definitely shows some use, you know, again, with the defensive players, you're going to get the, you know, great use. And you're, you're, you're never going to get that inscription, you know. It, it's, you and I aren't going to get that on the field. They're not going to sign, uh, they're not going to do that for they're us. They're not going to give us a jersey, period. <laughs> so. Thank goodness you're not out there with me, Tony. <laughs> Last time yeah. Tony ran onto the field, he, you know, they tackled, they tackled him and arrested him. So you know, I was at the game. I, I said I didn't know him. Yeah. He's in the green man outfit, full body suit. It's a that sight to behold. It's the most beautiful uniform combination you're ever gonna see. There's nothing that can top that. Mark it down, ladies. The and most gentlemen. beautiful, the powder blues. True, true fans wait for them to break it out. They break it out usually once a year. And with Tony, Packer that, fans are going to be extremely I'm upset. I'm sorry. And it's, Tony, it's, it's, Tony is a man of superlatives. I, so. The baby blues is the most beautiful uniform style. I think he's going to say something else is more beautiful later on. In this segment, <laughs> yeah, so. It'll right. be when I pull this one out. Right <laughs> like, oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. I was wrong on that. So another defender. You led the way, Nick. And uh, we chose from what your choices were. So uh, I had to bring this one out, too. Absolutely dominant Ooh, player. Yeah, this is a 2012-2013 Terrell Suggs game worn oh, jersey. Beauty. And this one is just dominated with hit marks, wear all over it. It's got the Art Medell patch right there. He had passed that year. And this is from a playoff game against the Colts. Uh, and Suggs was probably in a good mood. They won. And uh, it's photo matched to a Getty image. And um, Nike size, year, and 6LB tags sewn into the collar. But another sure Hall of Fame player Absolutely. right here. Uh, those Ravens had a lot of good defensive players. Yeah, they have. They had th era. through he's, the years they've had. Is he on the, he's on the, the Cardinals currently? Or? Uh, he's playing somewhere. God, where is he? He playing? is. There's three prominent face mask marks on the back as well. So, uh, you know, we've shown a lot of great modern... NFL jerseys that just yeah I feel like this it. auction is is there's a for, lot of if you really like defensive players there's there's yeah. definitely a lot of, of a lot of uh, if defense you like, if you love the stuff that was out there on the field there's a lot of great items and yeah, they're photo auction. matched yeah which is a very difficult thing to have and uh, you know and that of course those generate the highest prices the the ones that are photo matched but yeah great so what you want to see you want to you exactly you want to know exactly what game it came from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when you can mark that little hit you know or that oh, little absolutely. thread oh. you know it puts a smile on tony's face <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean tony will lay some hits on people i've had some uh, bear hugs from him that have left maybe a bear hug maybe well. bear hug another employee could could probably is <laughs> suplex city maybe <laughs> 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 oh boy <laughs> so we have, Tony, be careful with that. I'm not going to take off the face mask. The face mask is included here, guys. Deacon Jones, 
Um, Ooh, late legendary. in his career, yeah, one of the greatest defensive players of all time, if not the greatest defensive player, with the head slap. I had, I had to do it on here. He, um, this was his. People weren't doing it to him, Tony. No, no, he was. Who he was. Dare. He was ringing bells. Uh, this was from his days with the Chargers. He finished his career in San Diego. Um, but what they used to do with the helmets is they would actually paint them over. They would take his regular game used helmet or who's ever, you know, in, 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 during this time period, and they would paint it over and they'd put the uh, decal on, so it's kind of an interesting modification. But uh, a beautiful game-used helmet from Deacon Jones, arguably the greatest defensive lineman in NFL history. That's sticker on the back there. I'd have to... There is a... Is there, that a men's restroom sticker? No, there is... A, there is... There was a Dick Butt Kiss, I believe, we sold that had a similar I remember, sticker. I remember seeing it. Yeah, yes. I, I'd have to look it up. I will. When we take a commercial break, I will get that answer. Okay. That's another promise. Are you marking the promises down, Matt? Nick? Yes. Nick? I remember that happened last time. I think I was supposed to be wearing a giant hat this time. <laughs> what? Possibly. <laughs> but who can Sorry. remember that? It may live on the internet forever. But. Uh, all right, Nick, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Now what do we have? To, uh, that photograph right there. Ooh. The photograph market is wow. incredibly hot right now. It's not a defensive player, though. So for, for, for card people, you know, photographs are, are a big thing, especially if, if their image is used for cards. So this was used for his 53 Tops card. Um, definitely a, a nice team issued photo. Um, and again, that you, you want to see, you know, for, for uh, photograph collectors, you want to see a, a Hall of Fame subject. You know, yep. those normally command the most. Used for a card, too. Uh, I used, mean, it's used such for a, a selling point. Yeah, definitely a selling point. So w one of uh, a great image, clear image, you know. It, oh, it looks, it, it it looks, looks like it was signed, signed actually. Yeah. Really? Hey, J no. I don't know if that's uh, mentioned in the description, but I think... Tony, did you describe it? I did not do that one. No, I didn't. I'll look it, it up. It definitely was... was uh, well, I'm pretty sure it was signed. Uh, you could see remnants of a signature. It says, best wishes, Jackie Robinson, how he normally signs it. So Absolutely. That, that, that would be good. an added bonus. Just uh, Nick! I, 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 Nick! <laughs> going above and beyond the call of duty. It does uh, not say signed in, 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 our, uh, in our title there. But. but that's why we do this. We discover the little things right there. People watching the show get those inside tips that not everybody's gonna get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Tony, you got any betting tips or anything while we're on the betting? Show? No, sure. no. Okay. I am gonna Chiefs say this tonight. Again. I got Mahomes on my fantasy team, but I always take it. No, let's hold on. Everyone wants to hear about someone else's fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. They do. Let's no, get they into don't. it. Let's no, get into I, it. No, I. Everyone, worst. give us any questions you have about Tony's fantasy teams. Um, <laughs> it's use I'm on terrible. His bench. As I always say about these, I love these holders. Uh, the it's holders great. are absolutely just, it's a beautiful look for these. If you, you go into Tony's them. bedroom, it's just all uh, his family uh, photos, I'm, his, <laughs> slab, his wedding type photos. One, <laughs> type one. I should do that. That's actually a good idea to get a type one, like a, you know, like a family photo. Obviously, with that endorsement, you have some connections at PSA. So I sure don't. I have, I, I have the old slab they used to do, which is vintage, you mean? Not pretty. <laughs> this is classy. It's beautiful. You can stack them too. But definitely a cool photo. If there's a photo to own, you know, especially a baseball photo, you want to own one that was probably used for a card. Yeah. Just yeah. because they're exactly. just iconic images. So. Instantly recognizable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely and it's, cool. And it's so clear too. I mean, that photo, is there's it's just so crystal clear too. All right. And I'm going to stick with that same theme. Right here we have a 1900s Christy Mathewson cabinet photograph. I'm sure you recognize this image. It was used for his 1915 Cracker Jack card. One of the most famous images of the uh, iconic dead ball era ace. Uh, it was also used in his w W600 card, his M116, and uh, some other sets. And he looks great there in his Sunday best. Um, and it's in phenomenal condition, over 100 years old, and just looks beautiful. Fantastic image of one of the most legendary pitchers in the game. And uh, it is mounted. PSA does not authenticate mounted photos. 
Um, but every detail of the image in the mountain co is consistent with cabinets of the era. Yeah, so that, that, standing that's image. relatively consistent with everything. Everything of that era, for the most part, was in a mount. You know, a lot sure. of things got that's pasted. That's what they did. And that's sure, that. You had a beautiful photo over here. Wouldn't you want it mounted? I mean, that's how my photos of Tony are. <laughs> I need to get them slapped. We have to though. take some more photos. We need to get more <laughs> at the national, you know, instead of all these, all these shows. And if the national, you can come by and get your photo with Tony as well. He loves you don't to take that. pictures, sign autographs, it's not a, all that. It, that's not a good look here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right, try Tony, and do better for next Tony, year. Tony, what do you got over there? 1948. Um, it's from Babe Ruth's final appearance at Yankee Stadium. The classic Nat Fine. A Babe Bow, uh, the Babe Bows Out. This is taken just moments before that classic image. Um, right. This one actually shows the front of him. Um, you know, he was in failing health at the time, and but he did still squeeze out a smile, and uh, everyone's kind of looking on and adju adulation. Uh, I like that just, one because he's right when he's coming out of the dugout. You know, the crowd is going nuts. Yep. Uh, the famous one from the back, you know, it's kind of a more somber moment. It is, like it is. Goodbye. Almost like reflecting kind of on his But this life. one, you know, is his entry during that event. And uh, you can see he's happy. He's going to be tipping the cap. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and I think moment. it was a Bob Feller's bat he had. That's correct. I think it was Bob Feller's bat that he just grabbed. And uh, um, just a classic, classic moment of baseball history. And, uh, and again, in this beautiful slab, it's a type one. Um, beautiful photo of, of Babe Ruth at the end of his life. Re-emphasize, Tony loves those slides. I think <laughs> we have a question from Chris on Facebook. Hi, Chris. Asking, what is the best value item, in y'all's opinion, going in the five hundred to thousand dollar range? Best value at five. I would. 000. I would say this. Some of the some of the autographed index cards, um, some of the um, Hall of Fame postcards. I think some of those are you're starting to see creep up a little bit in value. Um, you know, even a Jackie Robinson index card, um, you know, for $1,000. I think that's a that's a very, very good investment I, piece. I have a piece coming good. up that, that, that'll be in that yeah, range. That, yeah. And uh, some of you, I'm sure, have noticed we have some non-sports items in the auction, and there's some great autographs and photos in there that are right in that price range. A lot of those are in session two, closing tomorrow night. There's a nice Steve McQueen. Great Steve there. McQueen. Yeah. Uh, good, Nick. From the getaway. Aren't Great. there some Marilyn yeah. Monroe photos too? Yeah, there are. Oh, yeah. They always, those things always do well in auction, especially with Tony. I I don't own one. <laughs> I need an autograph one. To Tony. All right, let's talk some more photos. You got another uh, sure. classic right there. This is in that range. I have a couple that'll be in that in that in that range. Uh, this is a, another photo. This was used for you know the the classic 48 Bowman rookie card. This is a Type Three photo. Most people stray away from Type Threes. That's why I kind of wanted to talk about it. Type Three photos are still period photos. So just just because it's a Type Three photo designation doesn't necessarily mean that you know it wasn't produced during the era. So very good point. On so that. it it's still produced. It was still produced in, in, in the 40s. Um, so with a Type 3 designation, it has to be print, printed uh, two years, within two years of the photo being produced. So it was produced. Look at that photo knowledge yeah. right there. Those so it was produced. are hard it, to remember. It, 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 was, it, it, was, it was produced using probably a, either, e, either a duplicate negative or a wire, a, a wire transmitter, but it, it was still produced within that, that two year span. So still a period photo, one of the most iconic basketball images for sure of one of the most dominant big men to ever play. So and just a sight of pure <laughs> athleticism. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny you mentioned the type three is because I know you and I talked about it a few auctions ago. We had, a, I think it was a Lou Gehrig. It might have been from the Gaudi card, and it, it did, I don't know, it was like eight or 10,000. And we're sitting right. there like, oh my lord, that is incredible for a type three photo. Yeah. And Tell you're exactly language. right. <laughs> what? We're just relaxed. Oh, sorry. I get excited talking about this stuff. I'm sorry. But, you know, some of these type, fo type three photos do have very good value. We have another question on Facebook from Jay. Hey, Jay. This is for Nick. He says, wow, check out Nick's style and shoes. Any chance we can get an autographed copy? Oh, Ooh. man. I suggested the, Tony do the smell test. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, are, these are a personal pair. These, these, these are game worn by Nick. <laughs> yeah. Work worn. Yeah. Those are beauties. <laughs> So man. I would like to see Tony do the smell test, though. I'm I, a fan no, of oh, Tony. Man. Jay is one of our biggest fans. Thank you, Jay, for watching and commenting. Um, Chris Nerritt just says hi from Chi Town. Hi, How's Chris. How's it going, Chris? Hi. Portillo's, I bet, tonight. That's his, <laughs> that's his auction uh, 
Food of choice, I bet. Three meals a day from that physique. Boy, yes. he likes <laughs> portillos. <laughs> um, all right, so let's move on. Got another great photo. Um, this one's on display, so I don't have it on hand here, but uh, the people at home can take a look at the oh. image of it. This is a circa 1919 Shoeless Joe Jackson original news photo. Type 1, of course, and a fantastic image. Uh, arguably the most famous image of Shoeless Joe right there. Man teetering between celebrity and being infamous right there is from 1919. Uh, took the greatest scandal in the history of our national pastime to define him. Uh, before that, he was the greatest hitter in the game. And then after that, of course, blackballed from the game. Uh, but here, you can even see a little smile creeping in on his face. You don't see that in his images. You don't, you uh, don't all that it's often. It's just a simple portrait, but a beautiful one. And uh, on the back, it has a pair of ca paper captions affixed that relate to Jackson's legal woes in the immediate aftermath of the uh, scandal. Wow. So that's a cool little addition there. And uh, it's got the handwritten editor's notations, international news service stamping, and uh, it's seven by five. And Tony, what do you think about the slab? I love the slab. He loves the slab. <laughs> I love, but uh, no, that one. Nothing I, if not consistent. I, I know we talked about it in the past. I just, I mean, those, that that clear image of Joe Jackson during the most a nice, tumultuous time of his life. Yeah, and a nice portrait photo. It is, it is. A yeah. lot of the images out there of him are batting practice or action ish. Signing photos. an autograph? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see one of those. Oh. But there are many portrait photos like, like that out there, and it's just a beautiful one, so that's an iconic item right there. Tony, you got a whole collection of photos. I have a, pho a photography book. It's um, probably the earliest known Green Bay Packers. Um, it has to be a photograph from their first game, 1921. 1921, right. along with some baseball, some period baseball photos from all centering around Green Bay. Um, the Green Bay Amateur League. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And uh, just uh, just fantastic stuff. Of course, they've had a, f a few fires there. The Packers did within the organization. One at, at their training facility and in insurance scams. Well, we're not gonna. We don't know about all that stuff, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do some more research on that. I but don't know anything about that. Either. A lot of that stuff uh, is was gone because of that so there's not a lot of early Packer period photography to to own and this might be the only chance to get a type one an original photo from their first game and uh, I was looking through that earlier and if you go online to ha.com you can see all the images in mm -hmm. there are imaged and it's some incredible photography a lot of the amateur baseball which is very cool mm -hmm. and then those Packers first game photos. Yeah, yeah. I mean th that's something that's going to jump up quite a bit. I'm sure at the very end. It's a great shot of the it's a parking piece of lot history. Of the stadium. It is. Yeah, I mean, Packer collectors are very fervent, as you know, um, <laughs> and that's something that you know your Packer collector friends aren't going to have. Exactly. So and how do you put a price on something like that? There's no comparison. You put it in an auction. You, you yeah. put it in a heritage auction. That's and what we do for a living. That's so. <laughs> some better than others. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. All right. Uh, let's talk yeah. about this award that's sitting right here in my elbow. Nice. You so, want to handle this? Or uh, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll pick Nick, it up. Nobody is... Live dangerously. Live dangerously. So this is no, a... They look fragile, but... They, they look fragile, but it's a, it's a nice piece if, if you're if you're a Marlins fan like I am. So Tons of Marlins fans out there, right? Just everywhere. He's yeah, everywhere. Fan, everywhere. He, currently, right now, you know, they're lowest attendance in baseball, but, you know. Uh, the so, so this is a 97 World Series trophy, so definitely this was presented to uh, somebody that worked for the team. Uh, a, a cool, unique piece definitely for any Marlins fan any baseball fan for that matter you know you want a World Series trophy yeah in I mean, your collection you know and and these things you couldn't just go out and buy these these were only issued to the players and yeah high-ranking officials so um, something like that yeah I mean yeah, it's not something you can just go and get and I mean uh, you know for 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 the significance of these the the relative price tag on it is is relatively affordable to a collector yep. more so than let's say uh, a World Series ring right. uh, you know so th these type of items are, are great, especially uh, for fans that want to display, you know. So. And it's not too big. Like the ones that the that, that the teams get are 
just so huge. Whereas yeah. this is more manageable. Who wants those? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, this you can you can put on display in your office, and it's not too gaudy. And uh, Tony, where's your Brewers one? You know, Nick. You know, <laughs> as he was talking That's about that, no, as That's he was talking about low. that, they have two World Series, and what you guys start ninety two, and yeah, they're well, still waiting for one. The Marlins' fun fact is the the only two times they've made the playoffs, they were wild card teams, and they won the World Series wow. both times. So I always say, 100%. if the Marlins are going to make the playoffs, they better win it Just, all. <laughs> just go to the wild, yeah. be a wild card team. Yeah. Don't win the division. Yeah, don't don't win the division. Be the wild card team, and but but go 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 full on for it. You they're know, working on that underachieving part of it. Right yeah, they're, they're working on the tanking. The they they, they got to build up. It's you know, a sticky situation to get. Right maybe in maybe in about two. twenty years, you know, we'll talk. <laughs> maybe if Derek Jeter comes to bat or something. <laughs> I bet he could still make the lineup. Oh, he he'd be he'd be the best player on the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tony, quick quick name name me five Marlins besides Lewis Brinson. He took what I was gonna say. I was gonna say it when you said besides. It's a game you can play at home. I, I <laughs> can't now. I'm sorry. You got me. I was I was like saying L like Lewis and oh, you got me. All that. right, so we're gonna stick with awards. Uh, this is one from my youth right here. This is a 1994. Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl trophy and it was awarded to the tight ends coach Robert Ford and uh, yeah the Cowboys used to make the playoffs and win Super Bowls back in the day and there's Connor, still a chance there's still chances I, I know I, I haven't given up yet uh, but I was a young 13 year old with dreams of stardom when this happened right here this was the back-to-back uh, -back against the Bills and um, I mean, the iconic Lombardi Trophy. What more do you have to say? It feels great to hold. And it's got the name on it. It's got, you know, it's got the team name. It's got the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl it was from. NFL Shield. It's just a uh, fantastic piece right there. And uh, like this uh, World Series trophy, it's a great display piece for your office, in your house. Uh, <laughs> everyone knows what it is immediately. Um, so beautiful piece. and Still some of the greatest teams I've ever seen, those Cowboys teams. Absolutely. Offense and defense. The line play on both sides was just uh, amazing. Let's get into it. Let's go through the roster. So, uh, no? I, no? If you want to. I mean, their offensive line was, was amazing. Let's I talk about the all... Bills. Let's... Oh, I thought he was going to bring <laughs> up the Michael guys. Irvin and Elvin Harper just <laughs> crushing my youth. But, yeah, for any football fan, the Lombardi Trophy is a great item to hold. And if you're a good American, then you're a Cowboy fan. Uh, America's team, and it's a great piece to have. Right it's here. iconic. Oh, yeah, no. this one has a little use on it, so a uh, little celebration going on. Is there champagne? No, our cameraman wants to get in on the air. He wants to hold it. We'll allow it, I guess. We'll allow it. All right, Tony. Uh, yeah, I don't know where mine is actually, though. Uh, yeah. Oh, we didn't bring it out. It was too big and heavy. I knew you could handle it. Uh, but it's it's the, a uh, Hank Aaron 1999 Hank Aaron award, and that's given to what the <laughs> you're supposed to be the expert. Come on, Tony. <laughs> oh man, on, Tony. you got me on this one. <laughs> I did see it, and it's beautiful, and it is very, very large and very, very heavy. It is. So. I don't know if it's heavier than the Heisman Trophy, but uh, oh, we could bring out a scale because and, yeah, ladies I, and gentlemen, we do have a Heisman Trophy in the auction. That's Ricky a tease. Williams Heisman Trophy. We're gonna be talking about that <laughs> later with a uh, celebrated alumnus of the university. Tony, of how don't how don't you know what the Hank Aaron Award was given I, to? It's it was it the best offensive player, is it? I you 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 got one. <laughs> I got one. Yeah, right. <laughs> For the most strikeouts? No, that would be me. The most strikeouts. All right. Well, you can see it online at ha.com, and uh, maybe you can put in the comments what it is so we can tell Tony. Uh, what are you supposed Tony, to Tony, this is Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy. You, you got it wrong. <laughs> Pretty boys. Ken Jennings, you are not my friend. <laughs> you're you're in the negative right now, Tony. You may not After make it a final. You may not make it a final Jeopardy. I'll hand in my badge, and we had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about that ticket stub. The ticket stub here. These these are really cool pieces for definitely in that price range of five hundred to a thousand dollars. So cool cool pieces. Uh, this is a fifty six World Series. Uh, Don Larson perfect game ticket. So. Uh, this is this is a stub. Um, it graded a poor one, but you know this this is the only was there. this this is the only perfect game ever thrown in World Series history. So this significance will this ever happen again? 
Probably, probably not. not. That's just because pitchers. I would say just to have one pitcher pitch a complete game. Yeah, just to have a shutout. Let's say in in a, in a World Series game for a pitcher. You know, Garrett Cole has been dominant. Let's say. Let's say they make it to the World Series. The odds are that he's not going to pitch. He, the max he's going to pitch is probably until the eighth inning, just because the the leash is so short for pitchers. I mean, the question is, even if he was pitching a perfect game in a World Series game, say it's a close game, a one to nothing game. Would they risk it just for the uh, perfect game, or would they throw somebody out there? Uh, probably, I'd say probably not. You know, yeah. it's it's definitely going to be one of those things that no matter how well he's pitching, they're gonna they're gonna pull him out. You know, and that's that's a sad <laughs> Can fact. You imagine? The, the, Can you imagine? The game the game has really changed, and you know, a, a piece of a ticket is so underappreciated as as a collectible you know uh now now even teams are moving away everything's electronic but you know again right. i think there's a sense of nostalgia to a ticket there's a sense of nostalgia to a program it's something that you know you're getting when you're going to the game and you keep as kind of a memento you know f as, as a piece of you know it's a piece of history so and, you know the cool thing about that you know it's, it's a psa one but that's because the person who went, they kept it. It was a momentous occasion. Yeah, they shoved it in the back of their pocket. You see they the crease. Yeah, you see the creasing to where they just they shoved just it in their pocket. Their... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. We get an instant replay on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they loved it. You know, I'm sure they were talking about it with their friends. They were showing it off. So you know, it's almost like a game game used item there. Yeah, and if you're a Yankees fan, this is the, the piece to own. You know, right? So cool piece there. T Tony, I think has a has a. All kinds oh, of goodies. Me first. Me oh, first. Well, oh, come on. Oh. No, 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 no. I was opening up There's my gift. There's an order to this thing. There's an order to this thing. So, another great ticket here. 1996 Michigan Wolverines ticket. You know what it's for, Tony? That is a great... It, it's a, it's Tom Brady's first... Is his first college start? Start. Not even his first start. His, first, his first game. game. His first time he went into the game. Uh, they were playing UCLA. They demolished them 38-9. to Second item where UCLA's taken a beating that we've talked about. Sorry, Bruins Who would have fans. Thought to, to to keep that. But the game was well in hand, so they put in third string quarterback Tom Brady, and uh, so incredibly rare piece, of course. Exactly, who's keeping this ticket? Uh, college students aren't great at uh, holding on to things, <laughs> and uh, you know, not a memorable game. You know, they're playing a Pac-10 team. Um, obviously not a very good Pac-10 team, or at least didn't have a good showing. But for a Tom Brady fan, you know, this is almost a must-have. It's right a must-have, and it's a, it's graded an 8, so it's, that's it's, a, it's, that's a, a, it's a high grade. It's the highest graded. Appearance. Yeah. Uh, and especially, uh, look at look, look at those corners with those blue corners like that. Only 15 have been graded, and this is the highest graded wow. example mm -hmm. right here. So one that one is right a there. very good investment for, piece. Yeah. For, for a Brady collector, okay. that's... A, Definitely a Michigan fan, you know. Yeah. That's that's a grail piece right there in yeah, the future. Absolutely. Completed, Especially uh, eight. one of two mm -hmm. passes for 13 yards. You could see it all right there. What was gonna happen? <laughs> and even stubs, stubs don't gr always grade that high just You're because right. you know they're torn. Yeah, pool tickets. A lot of the times yeah. they're unused. You know, so you see that. But with stubs, the the variability on that is they're all, they're always put in their pocket. You know, something. Absolutely. Yeah, that that's one incompletion, the pressure was on, and he got the ball out quickly and just threw it away. <laughs> he was playing. He didn't the run. Team. <laughs> he didn't run. I bet. <laughs> I bet it was pretty slow back then. <laughs> so, very unique ticket there. We have another question from Jay on Facebook. Hey, Jay. He sees that World Trophy, uh, uh, World Series trophy behind you and is asking who you all think is going to win this year. Whew. Tony, let's see. Astros. I think the Astros. With their pitching, um, and they've got such a well rounded. They got to make it past the Yankees. They first. do, absolutely. And do we have any score on that game? Can, can somebody tell us what the score is? One nothing about ten minutes ago. Okay. Who's winning? Yankees. Sorry. Yankees. Oh, one nothing Yankees. Three one now. Astros. Three oh, one. Oh, Magnus with the drop in. <laughs> Tony, we, Tony placed the bet. Yeah, <laughs> How much? Very good. A penny? <laughs> A quarter. I'm sure Tony's mom knew she's one of the greatest prognosticators in the industry, so I'm sure she was all over that. Tony, did she give you the inside tip there? She did not, and not to toot your own horn, but we did just get some bids on the uh, Tom Brady ticket stuff. Very cool item. It um, is. Very yeah. unique. Hard to find. There's only 15 grade. That's so, it. Wow. 
And you know that was due to Tony saying investment piece. Yeah, yeah. Is that right. Get no, if if you need there. investment advice in stocks, <laughs> memorabilia, anything, they're going to be Tony's retracting the, the bids pretty soon if I do that too much. <laughs> Tony, Tony's the one to reach. Yeah. Financial yeah. advice. Uh, do not take financial. Advice. No. Easy. That. Nick, that's, Nick that's can tell all the stories of what I bought <laughs> that uh, hasn't really panned out. So what tickets you got there, Tony? Jim Brown, the legendary Jim Brown, his last game was a 1965 NFL championship. Oh, and who'd they play? They played the Packers. Oh, and of course. very difficult to find these in high grade because of the yellow borders on these. Um, this one's graded a three, but um, graphic-wise, just a beautiful ticket um, with the yellow background and then the green built in. Um, uh, uh, you know, it is a three, but it's a, it's it's not easy to find. Of course, full tickets from any of the championship games because back then they ripped them, and um, full tickets. You know, they everybody went to the games. Yeah, so in just in some instances, people didn't, if you didn't go. With go why would why would you save it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So back then, we um, didn't know it was going to be worth anything. I and mean, at if the you were time, Tony Geezy, he saves everything. He would have saved it. That's I, the type of person. No, I used to save that. newspapers. That's the stuff I used to save. And ended Tony, tell me you don't have auction catalogs from ten years ago in your. I house. have whittled it down quite a bit, and you, you, you know, I have down. too. It's I used to carry them with me, and I'd tell my wife it's for research purposes. And, and then she introduced you to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you whittled it down. I, after that. I, I have some, but it's it's. Susie, uh, if you're watching, you're a saint. That's all we can say. I think she's at work right now, but <laughs> maybe she's watching from work. You never know. She's a nurse. She better not be watching. <laughs> she's out there saving lives, and that's what you're doing, right, Tony? Exactly. <laughs> and giving the investment uh, tips to everybody out there. All right, from tickets world. to programs. To programs. Another underappreciated field. Uh, this is actually a, a, a graded program, which uh, you don't see too often. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a it's a kind of a new fad uh, in 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 uh, in the program world. Uh, graded comic books, you always see. Absolutely. You know, it's a big thing uh, now with the magazines, the Sports Illustrated's of the world, are are all getting you know much much needed attention. And it's funny because years ago. You know what we used to talk oh, it's story just time. just well in the industry how how come nobody grades publications <laughs> and it it's this thing this should have been popular yeah fifteen years ago and this I don't, yeah. this is a, definitely a significant program so this is uh, an ABA program from Dr J's first game so first pro game right wow there. first program so. Uh, Supposedly, it's one of only about three known. This is the only one great. Is it an exhibition game? Oh, it would have been October 15th, 19th. Yeah, so yeah two days ago was the anniversary of that. Yeah, definitely. My mom's birthday was yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. Is there any birthday Excuse cake here or anything? <laughs> no? Every day, Tony <laughs> asked for cake. I, <laughs> we had cupcakes, constant, and I didn't get the buttercream frosting. food. For for basketball fans, this is something that That's you know. Beautiful, beautiful. I think the bidding was just shy of six hundred dollars on it, so definitely a cool piece for any basketball fan. Got a ton uh, of potential. Yeah, too. ton of potential. You know, of arguably one of the definitely the top hundred hundred greatest players ever to play. And if you look at the at the ABA games, there not not a lot of people went to these games. Right. So there's probably not a lot of these programs out there. There's probably and, yeah. There's. And it's his ABA debut, and he basically shouldered that league and carried it as long as it lasted. You mm -hmm, know, he mm -hmm. was the icon of that league. The Afro, the red, white, and blue basketball, the slam dunks. Just, Obviously there's... an inspiration for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great program. But cool <laughs> graphics, too, on that one. Yeah. Uh, of the era, ne as they say. Next episode, Tony, Tony will be in ABA short shorts next episode. <laughs> I have some, actually. Nobody I've got bucks. That. I do have buck shorts from the 70s. I could, I could produce those guys. Mark that promise down, Magnus, if you would. There's another uh, Tony Geezy promise. <laughs> All right, I've got a program, too. <laughs> ah, no, you don't want to see me in those. Can we leap to shorts. consequences, perhaps? Tony, it's Halloween coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, I could do like Team Wolf or something. And, that yeah. is frightening. All right, I've got a program as well. This one's a little bit older. This is an 1881 University of Michigan football program. They were playing Yale. And this is the earliest known Michigan program right here. A storied franchise. And playing Yale, the Ivy League teams at the time were the most dominant teams. Uh, the Wolverines did field, quote, football teams in 79 and 80. But the rules were a lot more akin to rugby. 
So this is kind of this season in 80, 1881 is kind of considered their first football squad. Um, it's the first that could be accurately described as American football. And so this is just what we like to call ancient program and it is in remarkable condition 1881 it looks brand new uh, so November 2nd playing the Yale Bulldogs uh, Yale triumphed that day uh, apologies Paul Mitchell uh, <laughs> Michigan fan I'm sure he's watching uh, he has nothing else to do uh, you may, need, you may need, <laughs> need to go up to his office and hand in your badge uh, yeah. so uh, the examples of this that exist you can count on one hand and this is the finest one known well, so earliest known program for Michigan, finest example, and it's in phenomenal condition. Yeah, it is. That's checking a lot of boxes right there. What's the estimate on that? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty grand. Wow. Yeah. If so there's only three, I no don't one think it was quite there yet. So, <clears throat> uh, twenty grand for something this old, top of the heap, as they'd say. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of potential still for that one. As we said, extended bidding begins at 10 p.m., so you got time. That's when the fun begins. Absolutely. That's when I hit refresh. We're not having my... fun right now? Ah, uh, we're having a blast. Okay. Having a blast. What do you Tony, have? what do you got over there? Okay. Another program. Very I'm careful with this. There's themes tonight. This is a Notre Dame program. 1912, and we all remember, well, not we all remember, but... I wasn't there. I was. <laughs> that was even before me, actually. Newt Rockney as the legendary coach for Notre Dame. This is actually from his playing days. Wow. And uh, you know, I mean, he of course everybody knows him as as one of the probably the greatest college coach. Well, you know, in, in the history of the game. And but this is actually from his playing days in pretty good condition given the age of it over yeah. over a hundred years old graphics on the outside of that and yeah inside and the nice thing incredible. is incredible it's dated which is nice and then it's got you know both of the it's team names team photo it does have there. a photo on the inside I believe he is yes there is a team picture and he was a dominant player on that team. he was he, he was in. and uh, if you get up close there you've got Wabash and Notre Dame 1912 how did Wabash do in that game I bet they lost. <laughs> I believe they lost 49-6. to six. Is that what it was? Uh, that season, Notre Dame was pretty good. They scored 427 points and allowed 26 wow. on the whole season. And so, I bet both guys, I mean, I, I bet the uh, players played both ways. Probably that absolutely, bench. they did. The so, team photo, there's about eight nine eight people in it, I believe. <laughs> Uh, kind of like Tony's high school football team. <laughs> you know, the funny thing you mentioned that, I was home last weekend, and now they are playing eight-man football up up in the North Woods. As when you played five-man football? <laughs> oh, no, yeah. uh, the schools are much smaller now, but yeah, eight-man football is uh, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, too. So Out in uh, West Texas, East Texas, probably. Sure, too. sure. Yeah, eight-man football. Um, but our friend Chris Narrett and I were at Notre Dame a few weeks ago uh, for an event, and... We went and toured it and took a picture in front of a uh, Rockney statue. He's got a statue out in front of the stadium. Touchdown, uh, Jesus! Did you uh, you had to do that? Absolutely. Uh, so Notre Dame, they're like the Yankees of college football, you could say, as far as collectibles. A lot of history, and that's a great historic. Piece it is, right there. yeah, especially with Rockney as a player. I haven't seen an another one like that. All right. Well, Nick, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Batting you for having lead me. off here, knock yeah. it out of the park. Ricky Henderson style. Um, so you gonna do the bat good. flip? You gotta do a bat you flip or like something. You seem like a bat flip guy. I gotta be honest. Should I throw my shoe or something? <laughs> <laughs> so bidding still going on. If you're watching on Facebook, you can go to ha.com to bid. You can watch this show on our homepage there. Also on the recent bid screen, which uh, if you've seen Tony looking off screen. That's what he's staring at. You can watch the bids come in live, and you can watch the show right above it. You can click the link on the item to go look at it. Great way to see what's hot, what's happening, what's rising up the bid screen right now. And as you've seen, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want Tony to smell, uh, just hit us up <laughs> on Facebook. Salts. We'd love to answer your questions. <laughs> or if you want to know about Tony's history, a lot of questions about <laughs> that so far. Or anything investment-wise. Anything investment-wise. Investment -wise. Uh, All right. -bills, I'll, I'll see what I can do. That. <laughs> Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. And we're going to take a quick break and we'll have another expert. But right now, a word from our sponsor. I've got a catchphrase, all right. But you, my esteemed colleague, you got to catch pose. Well, I've garnered cinematic acclaim for my pose down abilities. 
I don't hold an organic repurposed candle to you, my friend. However, even though you're fashioned from rigid bronze, don't forget, I've got the more sculpted abs. My name is Roxana Uscali, and I'm the director of numismatics for the Chicago office. I actually worked at a coin shop for about eight and a half years, um, and when I knew Heritage was opening the office here in Chicago to cover the Midwest, um, the opportunity came up, and it was a perfect job for me. I really wanted to stay in Chicago. Um, Heritage has been well known in this area, but wasn't well represented in the Midwest, and so it allowed me to stay here, keep a lot of the same clients, do a lot of the same jobs that I was doing, visit people, and see amazing coins, um, really high quality. Every day is different, um, whether I'm making phone calls or emails, visiting clients at their office, at the bank, at their home. Um, the kinds of material that come in, wildly different every time. Um, it is never boring, it's always exciting. Personally, I love when I get to work with world coins, that's my specialty, um, and getting to see the collections that hobbyists have put together spent a lifetime putting together is just, it's wonderful. I've been able to travel around the country to pick up collections and just locally pick up things. Um, you wouldn't think that in your own backyard there would be million dollar collections of world coins, of currency, of U.S. coins and ancient coins, um, but it's very impressive. I've been able to see some of the highest graded German coins. I've been able to handle very high grade Latin American coins um, and it's just incredible to see these collections that have been put together. We actually had a client come in, didn't even pick up the phone. He drove all the way from Canada and he brought with him an ancient uh, gold medallion and uh, just decided that he, this was the closest office to him. He wanted to come in and meet with us and just decided to drive in one day. And it turned out to be one of the highlights of our upcoming a and um, Platinum Night. Over $200,000 of value probably. I think he had been doing some research and knew that we were the lead as far as coins go as well. So um, to be with the coins from the start to the finish is really, it's really wonderful. Welcome back. How about that? Great messages from our sponsors there. And you can see joining us on my right, the brains of Heritage Auctions Sports Department. This is Jonathan Shire, our head cataloger. Hello there. Can you get a round of applause? <laughs> we have a crowd of hundreds. Thank you for being so thousands. silent and polite. Uh, but uh, yeah, so welcome back to Between Two Turn Styles and our special auction edition. Jonathan, thank you for joining us. Happy to be here, except I am missing the Yankees game. Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> we were updating the score. Can we get a score update? Yep, it is. 3-1, bottom of the third. Ask There you go. Yeah, That's right. all you need, right? <laughs> It'll get better. I need to flip it. But, uh... <laughs> is that possible? Magnus, is that possible? Can we affect the score? <laughs> so, Jonathan does a lot for us. Uh, his main job is that all the incredible descriptions you see in our catalog are written by Jonathan. The uh, bad ones are written by Tony. <laughs> so, uh, Real yin and yang sitting here on my right. Uh, but Tony tries his hardest, so that's what really matters. Um, get the participation award, right? Yeah. Okay. But He gets the blue ribbon. <laughs> All right. Jonathan's great with language, and he's also one of our best researchers. Uh, he Appreciate knows a little, bit, a little bit about everything and anything you might happen not to know. When we get, we see a lot of obscure and unique items, one-of-a-kind items, and this is the guy who figures out what they are, what they're worth, and uh, takes the blame if he's wrong, <laughs> right? Yes, I do. <laughs> but the Yankees will always be my first love, fourth generation, Yankees fan. Um, and we're starting with this little uh, guy right we're here, are we not? We're start with this Babe Ruth signed photograph. Oh, okay. Well, right we're here. still on the Yankees theme then. Yeah, we're going to yes. bust out some Yankee stuff right to start. It's the 1937. That is correct. And uh, people were saying this is the only photo that has Ruth and Gehrig and DiMaggio all together. And I said, no, that can't be right because all three of them were together at Lou Gehrig's farewell. While they weren't posed together, you can see all three in one shot. So that makes this the only posed photo of the three of them uh, at least of uh, nice of, qualifier there. of which of which we're aware um yeah i mean in the other ones they're just tiny little 
little dot. So this is <laughs> this is you could make that argument and say that uh, that this is the only one because the the Garrick Day ones are. Uh, are certainly not on this level of, uh, of visuals, but uh, of course, Babe Ruth uh, every year for over a decade would choose along with sports writers from every uh, American League town, um, and I think every National League town as well, um, the, the number one player at each position, essentially his own personal all-star team, and uh, you could say that he was... Uh, a hometowner, but I think we can also uh, agree that the Yankees uh, were not just any team, and sure. that it why not agree? Why are right? <laughs> right. It was uh, it was legitimate that you see you see Gehrig there, you see DiMaggio there. I am only looking at the small image, but I believe Red <laughs> Ruffing was one of them, and um, Red Rolf too. Maybe it, maybe it was a different Yankees pitcher. I don't know if there were two reds in there. Unfortunately, the photo's not color, so I can't see their hair. Um, two but... reds make a red. <laughs> <laughs> and then, right. And then of course uh, it's it's autographed by Ruth down there at bottom left, as well. It's oversized. I don't remember exactly how big it is because we don't again have it in front of us right now. <laughs> but uh, you can look that up online. So. A lot of really cool things going for it. Obviously, any photo signed by Ruth is is highly desirable. You add the size, you add the uh, the unique uh, compilation of Yankees Hall of Famers, and it's uh, it's a piece that is going to impress uh, most people with good taste. And we've sold a number of those certificates. We have, I've we have. I wouldn't be surprised if we've handled one of those in that image. And if you are someone who owns one of those, this is a great complimentary piece to it Indeed. to uh, have a picture of them. Great display great display piece you could put with the certificate and the photo together. Are you talking about framing those together? No. <laughs> do you have a, no. Do you have a framing <laughs> business you want to plug? You got a lot of plugs in. No, so in our business we hate framing. That's the devil. <laughs> so I'm not going to plug framing. Apologies to Kay Cross for <laughs> our framing. We love you Kay. But uh, we're going to keep going with the uh, Yankees and Babe Ruth what we've got right here. It's a 1948 Babe Ruth signed the Babe Ruth story cover page of his uh, book, his biography. You think he penned that himself? I would guess no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, write the biography, and this is inscribed to the director of the film version, Roy Del Ruth. So a lot of cool things going on with this piece. Uh, the Babe's final public appearance came just three weeks before his August 48th passing. Uh, and he, where he attended the premiere, of right? The, the movie, mo the movie premiere, yeah, which was a terrible movie. <laughs> um, we're gonna get into movie reviews in just a little bit. Jonathan's um, gonna have. A... I'm gonna do safe at home. So <laughs> another outstanding. Have flick. you seen Rawhide with Garrick? I have. Yeah, it's a classic. <laughs> uh, athletes don't do so great in movies. Um, Blue Chips wasn't bad, was it? Space, Athletes space don't do jam. so great in movies. <laughs> space Jam. But well, they made a second one, so it's got to be good, right? I'll, you know, I'll give it to LeBron, that movie he was in recently. Uh, boy, put me on the spot. Anybody? Michael Irvin killed it in The Longest Yard. <laughs> wow. Magnus with the Michael Irvin love there. With the drop in. Uh, I'm down it. for that. I haven't seen that one, but I'm sure he was great. He's got a lot of personality. <laughs> Uh, and this has got a lot of positives for collectors right here. A bold roof signature. It's a PSA Mint 9 and inscribed to the director. That's some great provenance and tie-ins to the book and the movie. And also with the director's name being Roy Del Ruth. You got two Ruths in the signature because he inscribed it to him. And this lot also comes with an original program for the film. So if unlike Jonathan you enjoy the film, mm. maybe you'd <laughs> like to have that program as well. But a cool vintage piece. Super high quality too. Yes. We mean the movie. Now you're <laughs> changing, changing I mean the, the I mean the ink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Tony, what do you got? Over All right, here? we've got a Mickey Mantle check made out to the Major League Baseball Players Association um, from 1959. Though uh, you don't really see a lot of Mantle checks, but this one from his playing days for fifty dollars made out July 14th. Uh, again, you you know you don't typically see too many. Uh, mantle checks from his playing days, and this one's got a four thousand straight estimate. cash, homie. Ah, uh, well, think? it's got the nice vintage mantle signature, yeah, absolutely, and it is graded one. mint nine, so it look, appears to be in his all in his own hand as well. 
So it's kind of a cool mantelpiece. Have either of you guys ever gone to his grave? Have you visited him? I haven't, no. no. Yeah, me either. I'm afraid of ghosts. <laughs> Was he, is he buried here? Yeah. Oh, he, oh he's yeah, in Dallas. Right okay. over by like North Park Mall. Right, I should mention yeah. we're in Dallas, Texas yeah. at our home office. We're in yeah, the yeah. bowels of the Heritage Building in the sports department in our vault. Uh, behind us is million, all around us is millions of dollars of collectibles just hanging out. Uh, it's really a tough, <coughs> tough place to work. Tough place to work. Um, so we're going to move on. And next is. Oh, this guy's sitting right next yep. to us right here. <laughs> He's watching us. <laughs> Are the Yankees going to win the World Series? <laughs> so those at home, he's moving. <laughs> Wait, now he's a little no, no, unsure. No, no. He's a little unsure. <laughs> Being nice to Astros and Nationals fans. <laughs> How diplomatic <laughs> this nodder is. It's unusual for someone from the 60s to be so <laughs> PC. But you can, you can see by scale here, uh, this is not your typical nodder that you uh, see everywhere. It is 14 inches tall. It is one of only three known to exist. It is far and away the finest example. It is not only the finest example of this particular nodder. Most nodder experts would say this is the best nodder that exists in the world. Um, and not just because it's Yankees, although that's obviously a big part of it. Uh, the, the, the rarity, the condition, um, obviously the fact that it comes from the early 60s Yankees glory years. This is not some modern piece. Now they make human-sized nodders. But, uh, do they really? Yeah, they do. You've never seen one? Yeah. I have not. That would terrify <laughs> yeah. me. It might be like a Mike Trout, I think. <laughs> Tell us about those a little bit. Those were just made just in small, small quantities. Right, yeah, these were made just uh, never for never for sale. These were just a uh, promotional piece uh, that you would put in the shop where you would be selling the, the ordinary size. Um, this one uh, was... Uh, was shipped to us from from Japan. I want to say was. great Thanks provenance so. yeah. on that one. Um, and uh, it's from the son of the Japanese nas national who worked for the company that manufactured. Right, these. right. So that is the key to its survival, and that's why you never ever see them. Um, they just do not exist. Of course, there there were probably seven or eight of them at one time but they're so fragile they are and uh this one i don't know how but it doesn't have a mark on it and uh yeah pristine condition yeah, yeah it really is no hairlines most of the time you always see hairline cracks right. on the neck usually how's your hairline doing uh, <laughs> eh, could use a little work probably but very cool piece of course uh one of a kind or, uh, one of a, three one kinds. Of three kinds uh, <laughs> in this condition. Just outstanding. Indeed. It does have a little mischievous look in his eye, also. Is that grin, or is that just the angle? I mean, he's staring at me, which is making me very <laughs> uncomfortable right now. But, I mean, for a Yankee fan who's got everything, you don't have everything until you have this one. I would say this is perhaps the most unique piece in the in the auction. Okay. I found another unique piece right here for you, son. You're not going to hit us, are you? No promises. Okay. So this is a 1930s Yankee Stadium police badge and Louisville Slugger Billy Club. So while Garrigan and DiMaggio <laughs> controlled the field, whoever held this was controlling the stands. And I think this would do it. This was for the Yankee police force. Yeah. And there's a badge included as well, but Hilrick and Bradsby made it. So that's very cool. And... Really unique piece. I put this up on our social media a few weeks ago, and a lot of people were very interested in this one. Uh, just something kind of special. And Tony, if you step out of line. I love that it's made by <laughs> I know, that's the perfect <laughs> that little touch is. right there. <laughs> Light or, use on I mean, that who one, Who else though. are you going to have a baseball stadium police squad and make it <laughs> Billy Clubs? <laughs> and it's got a nice weight to it, nice balance, I'd say. You could really do some damage. There's no pine tar this. or anything. No pine tar. No hit marks. No cracks. No. no yeah, there's a little 
Little mar- no, no, no marks. It's just Yankees a fans are well, be- well, be- well behaved. <laughs> yeah. You get out of line. A yeah. skull isn't going to make many marks on something <laughs> like this, in my experience at least. But super cool piece. Another very unique one. If you have, if you're a Yankee collector, you probably don't have one of these, and it comes with their badge yeah. as well. It's a great so. conversation piece, and. Frankly, it would it would work if someone came into your house. <laughs> nice well, protection. Yeah, Ivy's not going to buy that. You pacifists are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what do you got over there? I've got Mario Cuomo's. Oh yeah. Uniform contract. Uh, he was a baseball player before he decided to get into politics later on. Which worked out well. And for him. <laughs> this actually came from one of the officials from the Pirates, and uh, it's kind of. It's an archive, basically, of just, uh, there's two signed contracts here, a lot of correspondence between Cuomo and the team. He had to be battled an injury. Um, his parents didn't want him playing baseball at all, especially his mom. She was dead set against him playing baseball. And, um, but just a really, there's some great content in here from his days as a pitcher, which didn't last terribly long. But uh, it's got a 4,000 estimate, so uh, I think this will. This is one of the more unique items in the. Was it pirates? I think it was the pirates. Yep. Um, just in there. There's two signed contracts with stipulations and that kind of thing. There's a questionnaire, which is really, really unique. You kind of get a look into his. What kind of questions are we talking? Here? Oh, let's see. Give the people a taste of what they what they need. To uh, buy. Did you go to college? Yes. Did you graduate attending? Did you participate in sports while in school? Baseball and basketball. Um, did you? Uh, is there anyone to whom you particularly owe your success in baseball? Joe Austin, Sandlot manager in New York. I played with him for seven. Shout years. out to Joe Austin. But who's his baseball hero? Joe DiMaggio. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, just a really unique item with... Uh, An Italian guy who likes who DiMaggio. Who likes an Italian guy? Soccer! <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news here. I wonder if he enjoyed pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a unique item, too. Those uh, things where you get a little peek into the history, especially someone that was known for something else but had a... Kind of a crossover effect baseball on baseball history. Great yeah, player. Yeah, it was just shocking how his parents did not want him playing baseball. I mean, I don't think they understood. You know, well, back then you didn't really make a lot of money in baseball. And nothing ever became of him. So no, he they, never made it. He never made a mistake. It. With only his parents to blame. <laughs> Jeez, mom. <laughs> All right. Next, we're gonna move to some bats. <clears throat> we don't have this bat here. It's also on display, but it's the 2012 Derek Jeter AL. DS game used and signed bat. Right, yeah, and that's the real beauty of a bat. Probably the coolest thing about it, although you can also argue that it's a, a sad thing. This was the last uh, postseason series that uh, Jeter ever won. They would lose in the ALCS uh, in 2012 and never make it back before he retired at the end of 2014. Uh, so yeah, just never have great. Yeah, I know. Success. I know. It's, uh, he had a rough, uh, a rough run, but uh, played more uh, postseason games than any player in history. Um, so it, it's it's got a lot of cool stuff going for it as far as that goes. It's also just great use, an amazing signature. As you can see, he uh, he inscribes it, the captain. A oh, rare, great inscription. Yeah, 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 a rare inscription for for Jeter. So, and is Derek Jeter popular? Yeah, I think people still like him a little yeah, bit. Okay. Yeah. What's gonna okay. happen next year when he goes in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, like, yeah, right. I mean, this do? is your last chance to. Uh, you think you think he'll make it? I think he's got a good chance. He's got a good shot. Yeah. So. Will he be unanimous as well now that that seal's been cracked? I think it would be absolutely insane if he was not. He's number six all time hits in in an era where. It's more power than, right. than hits. Like uh, all those had a little postseason success, right? All those championships, <laughs> few iconic plays, right? And, no controversy either, right? But love, you know, it's a hall decent of, list of girlfriends. It's the Hall of Fame, yeah. He, nobody more famous than he was the face of Major League Baseball for for almost twenty years, uh, and their flagship franchise. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, any anybody who voted against uh, Derek Jeter to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, in my opinion, should lose voting rights in perpetuity. Well, we're gonna hold you to that, yeah. voters. <laughs> so I know 
a lot of them watch the show. I think, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I've got a game used bat here. I actually have mine. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 2019 Hani game used bat, and this is career home run number 29 on this bat. So he um, it was the seventh of his second season. He had 22 home runs in his rookie season. And it was a 416 foot solo shot. So a real blast. And just a great bat here from one of the big stars in the game currently. Not bad uh, for a pitcher. Yeah, not bad for a pitcher. <laughs> uh, the modern day Babe Ruth, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony, can you read what it says? I... <laughs> I'll give that Tomo. a try. I'll get the <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's got the Japanese characters on it, which is a cool touch, and some great ball marks. You see that on there? Yeah, you can see this, the, the, the stitch in, in, indentations really clearly. That's probably clearly the one in, right there. In this, in this light, yeah, it's really showing. Showing up in this in this kind of light. Yeah, at it's... ha.com you can look at these and you can blow up the images huge so you can see all these marks that we're talking about. And you've got the there. MLB authentication on it too, so that helps. And Japan is really, wouldn't you say, coming up in the world from a collecting standpoint. If you're looking, now we can't make any any guarantees when it comes to investment, but if you just look at the trend of how many Japanese collectors are coming into the market, you'd have to think that something like this and each your own material. These bats are rare. They're hard yeah, to come by. Yeah. So um a great item to jump in on now and you can get it tonight. Extended bidding begins at ten PM. There's a uh, slight crack in the handle but it's been professionally repaired. So great Which item is right here. Yeah. Tony, what do you got? Well, this guy's sitting home right now, but uh, <laughs> Bryce Harper, game-used rookie bat from 2012, uh, graded a perfect PSA game-used 10. As you can see, he's got the Moda stick and the uh, pine tar on the handle, the tape job um, on the handle as well. Tons of ball marks. Yeah, yeah. just uh, this was this was a weapon, I think, for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just given just like uh, that billy club. <laughs> this has got more use actually. Um, uh, stitch impressions, ball marks. It's got pretty much everything you could want, and it's pinpointed to his rookie season. A lot of people gravitate towards the early stuff used used by uh, players, and he was one of the most celebrated rookies uh, of, of his time by skipping by skipping high school, basically going to junior college. And um, just dominating in the major like leagues. Kind of like the LeBron of baseball. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah, yeah. He would maybe he'd be great in a movie too. But Bryce we, Harper. But we wouldn't remember the name of the he'd, movie. He'd he'd be a villain for sure. <laughs> he'd have to be a villain. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, nice. Hey, villains are important part. parts of movies. Absolutely, so. they are. Yes. So nice, Bryce Harper. Early career, four thousand estimate, and um, just you know one of the best Harper bats you could own. Just battered too. Yeah, I love that. The two tone. All right, let's switch over to the defensive side. Jonathan in that box right there. Ah, yes. Careful of this little guy. I will be, yeah, he's making me nervous there. Um, <laughs> because of that look? Is he looking at, <laughs> yeah. is he looking at you now? He turned his head while you... Can you find the score on us, <laughs> maybe? Still he's looking at me. Creepy. Still looking at me. So we have uh, the Sandman here, Mariano Rivera. Um, of course, he just went into the Hall of Fame, just the uh, first, first unanimous, unanimous guy as he should have been. Um, of course, anyone who has followed baseball in the past 20 years knows that he was the most untouchable pitcher of, of the 21st century so sure. far. Um, absolutely shut down ninth inning guy. Um, Very clutch. Yeah, but, but also like so calm, which I guess you need to be to have to have that job. Like he would go out there, he'd let it fly, and whatever happened, he'd 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 live with it. I'm sure I've told you this story before. When um, when well, we've got a whole audience here. <laughs> when the uh, and a lot of Hall of Fame voters. When he had that shocking failure in Game Seven of the 2001 World Series um, and gave up the uh, the walk off winner to the to the Diamondbacks, which of course was incredibly heartbreaking, uh, particularly after 9-11 when the entire city was really watching the Yankees and just hoping for something good to happen. Um, his uh, teammate, Enrique Wilson, was uh, supposed to be on the flight to the Dominican Republic, which went down um, in Queens, I want to say, Queens or Brooklyn, and killed everybody on board. But since the Yankees lost, he went on, because he was going to stick around for the parade. But since the Yankees lost, he went home on a different flight. So if 
So if Rivera hadn't given up the 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 series, uh, uh, Enrique Wilson would have died. Wow. So I didn't know that. yeah. I so so he that. so Do you he think he knew the future. I don't think he knew, but he did say, "I'm happy that it worked out the way that it did because I'd rather have my friend than have that ring." It's a great yeah. selling, great story. Yeah. It's just amazing that at that position, it is so hard to to stay on top for a long time. I mean, that is the toughest position, and he did it his whole career, basically. Yeah, and, and everybody knew what was coming, and they just couldn't hit it. He had that, that one pitch, mm -hmm. and he would just saw bats off at the handle. Um, so this was used in the 2005 All-Star Game. Faced one batter, uh, mowed him down. Um, Photo matched. Closed it out, yep. And, the, and then also used uh, for the rest of the season. There's quite a bit of use on it. It's... Uh, you know, it's really just a perfect example of of, of a of a glove, um, nice and and soft, too too small for for my hand. <laughs> I but, was gonna say, um, that's a tiny glove. But a great item to have from a pitcher. Yeah. You know, you right. You want that's what you want from a pitcher. Uh, you want you want a glove, obviously a bat. I, he probably batted only like ten times in his career. <laughs> um, but uh, it's signed on the back, notated 05 All-Star, game used. Um, again, you can find lots of pictures of him wearing this. Um, it is, uh, it is a, a great piece of modern American Yankeedom. Wow, well put. That's that very good. <laughs> Word smithery right there. <laughs> so I've got some gloves here too. Uh -huh. Not Yankees. We're going to step away from the Yankees. These are 1972 Floyd Patterson fight worn gloves. And these are from the Bonavina bout. And he would win, Floyd Patterson, in a, uh, it was February 11th. And um, at Madison Square Garden. So any boxing event there of note. And just seven months uh, later, Muhammad Ali would send him into retirement for good. Yeah. So uh, his last wow. victory, a unanimous 10-round decision, and some great usage on these. You can see, yes, they were used to batter a human being, which if you collect boxing gloves, that's a great thing. You got a nice autograph on each, silver autograph on each. Uh, maroon 10 ounce Everlast gloves have outstanding wear and they have the New York State Athletic Commission stamping at the uh, sweat stained interior of the wrist and they come with a letter of provenance from his widow. Each beautifully signed. Each beautifully and, signed right there. And back then I mean boxing was one of the top three sports pretty much. Yes, um, 1972. I mean, people drop everything for a big boxing match. You saying you don't drop everything for a boxing match? Boxing still brings out people, but just not to not like what it used not to. Not Tony Easy. Well, is that what we're saying? I'll, I'll, I'll What's the last boxing I'll match you watch? I'm calling, um, you, out, calling you out. You here, know Connor. what it was? It was the Mayweather uh, Conor McGregor match. Oh, geez, okay. that was a while ago. That was about three or four years ago now. Wow. Yeah. Did I you did, see the video of Errol Spence rolling his Ferrari? Dude, I heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Very sad, but. Yeah. He miraculous. Lived? Yeah. He, yeah, he was ejected and he was like basically fine. Yeah, no broken bones, yeah. so just some scratches. They said he could be ready to fight right now. Yeah. Which, <laughs> I wouldn't fight someone yeah. to survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get through that. <laughs> it's terrifying. You got it made then. <laughs> Almost as terrifying as this guy staring at me. <laughs> He's right still now. looking All at right. you, Mike. Jeez. All right, Tony, what do you got over there? I've got an interesting item from the 2010 World Series. Oh, it's showing, it's showing Bo Jackson right now, but... Well, that's what you should be talking about. Oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll get to Bo. That, <laughs> that, one, that one gets like 10 minutes, I think. But uh, Josh Hamilton, 2010 World Series game used bat. And it might be hard to see, but there's actually gold marks on these from the baseballs. They use gold ink um, on the baseballs, and there are marks on this from repeated contact. This is... Think Gold in the World Series. Golden, yeah. yeah. So that 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 uh, whittles it down to the World Series. Also has a 2010 World Series um, branding on it as well. Um, just a great story, Josh Hamilton. Of course, one of the favorites, one of the Ranger favorites. Uh, I don't know World Series, it wasn't. Well, <laughs> he made contact a few times, <laughs> but uh, just a nice piece for uh, a, a diehard Rangers fan. Well, I am going to get. Next, I will get the Bo Jackson jersey. We got next. We can go over some of the bids that, are, that have been coming in. 
George Blanda, 2200. Kenny Stabler, 3600 right now. So a lot of people are kind of waiting towards the end to bid. And let's see what else we got here. Yeah. All right. I'll say this probably one of the coolest items in this sale. Bo Jackson Memphis Chicks game worn jersey. The kicker here is that it is actually photo matched to a game in 1986. Uh, not a lot of Bo Jackson items out there. Um, you can't find anything Raiders related. There have been a few Royals jerseys that have surfaced. This actually has a name has a name change on the back. If you look really closely right here, you can see the outline of where a previous name was. But this is photo matched, probably the earliest uh, photo matched Bo Jackson baseball item that's I mean, it has ever. To be, it, correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, with a nice team with a nice team patch on the side. Uh, this thing has an eight thousand estimate, but I could see it going for ten, even twelve thousand yeah. um, dollars. And it's incredibly difficult to photo match jerseys from this time period because there's not a lot of period photography from the, you know from, from the miners. minors from the miners yeah. exactly and uh just one of the nicest bo jackson items you could own and we've got another memphis chicks game worn jersey in the auction as well luke appling yes we do the manager so the, the chickasaws the i like saws all the chickasaw collectors out there you've got a couple you can go with and you almost need to get the pair don't you might as well i mean if you're gonna buy that one might as well buy the other get two one. mannequins and you Tony has all his stuff on mannequins. So <laughs> I finally decided to start showing like that. Stuff then you got it like that, I guess. Well, Jonathan, thank you very much. Always You're a welcome. pleasure to yeah. dive Yeah, thanks into for having me. Brain. Good luck and with your Yankees. Yeah. yeah. Right, Hopefully right they're, they're we'll winning look, now. We'll Score check. Do we have game. that? Still 3-1, middle of the fifth. Still 3-1. Three, three, one. One. There's right. time yet. All right. What time they is it? They need me. Yeah, go ahead. Please, go ahead. Get ready. Time check. What time we got over there, Taylor? 8.56. 8.56. you got about an hour left before extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central. You're bidding at HA.com if you're watching this on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please let us know. We'd love to uh, hear from you. Any questions about things in the auction or just about Tony's personal interests, of course, are always of note to everyone Fashion out there tips, watching. Fashion whatever. Investment <laughs> strategies, can't recommend that, but... <laughs> what do we got over there? We got any questions right we now? We do have a question from Glenn on Facebook. Hi, Glenn. Asking Tony, does the Rogers jersey show game use or is it clean? Uh, it is unwashed. It does show use and it is photo matched. So uh, that's, a, that's of course, what collectors want right now. Absolutely. Photo matching. It is photo matched. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of Rogers jerseys out there. Um, and he's back. One, he's playing well. He's back. Yeah, he is playing well. Now they have a defense. So. Sadly for Cowboys fans. Well. <laughs> but you got but about no, an hour. It, it's a very nice jersey. We've got a very special treat coming up next. The, our leader, our fearless leader, Mr. Chris Ivey will be joining us. But first, a message from our sponsors. Ricky Williams has been trophy. Yeah, it's up for auction. But calling this piece of greatness a collectible is akin to calling the Ark of the Covenant a fancy box. Both wheel, power, otherworldly, and are surrounded by an aura of mysticism. But this will elevate you to the pinnacle of esteem, while the Ark of the Covenant will just melt your face off. Bid accordingly. Nineteen fifty nine Gibson Sunburst Les Paul, serial number nine one nine six six. Uh, this guitar has been undiscovered, so to speak, in the Chicago area since the 70s is when the owner who consigned it 
purchased it. One thing about this guitar is Dwayne Allman's Cherry Burst, the one that's on Fillmore East, is 1968. And this one is 1966, so it's two before that. It's a beautiful top, incredible flame, which is what we all live for in the Sunburst. These guitars are rare and also iconic. It is the holy grail of electric guitars. There's nothing else that even comes close as far as electrics go. And they usually go very discreetly. Having one open to the public, so to speak, in auction is pretty rare, especially one that's never been discovered. This guitar's had some work done to it because it belonged to a guy who used it. He was a working musician in the 70s and 80s. So it was oversprayed, clear, on the back, but it was done by Paul Hamer, who later founded Hamer Guitars. It had Grover tuners on it at one point, but they were filled properly and re-drilled, and the original tuners have been reinstalled. Pickup covers were removed most of the time. Um, the owner actually had video of him playing it in the 80s with the covers off. So there is some wear on the bobbins, but the original covers were in the case and have been reinstalled. The refret was done considerable time ago because there is wear, although it's certainly very playable still. Rare find and a rare guitar. The icon of all electric guitars. The 59 Sunburst Les Paul. Welcome back to That's Between beautiful. Two Turnstiles. I'm your host, Mike Provenzale. You got Tony Geezy over here. Tony, how you doing so far? Great. I mean, this is. I mean, how often do you get to sit next to something like that? Look at that greatness right there. <sighs> Let's bring on an expert on this, a fellow alumnus of uh, the finest university in the nation, the University <laughs> of Texas. Our leader, our boss, the boss of bosses, Mr. Chris Ivey. <laughs> The alarm goes off. <laughs> oh yeah, good to see you. <laughs> the alarm goes off. That's all the security, just uh, <laughs> making sure everybody's aware. President's in town today. We thought he had a lot of security, but look at this the security <laughs> force over there. All right, there we go. Chris, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Um, Got to be nervous, Tony. Don't say anything uh, offensive. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, we got to play straight and narrow when the boss is on the show. Sure, so, sure. I'll be, I'll be my best. I yeah. promise. I'll He's promise. Real stick in the mud. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Chris is the head of our department. And how long have you been running this department, Chris? We started Heritage Sports in 2004, so it's been 15 years now. 15 wow. years of Heritage Sports. I figured out a couple months ago we've done about 500,000 in sales combined. So that's pretty incredible. And. We're the uh, number one sports auction house in the world, and yeah, just keep nodding. Five hundred, five hundred thousand. I think more now. Five hundred million. Okay, five hundred million. And I was like, <laughs> I was testing. Those out. numbers are kind of off. But I was like, I'm hoping. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> we have the best. So five hundred million. I'm not the math guy. All right? I'm not the accountant. I don't do that. But uh, yeah, so let's get right to it. This is the signature item in the auction right here. Cover piece. Beautiful item. Uh, there's only been a handful of Heismans that have ever come out that are available for public sale. Right. Um, and this is, what's interesting about this, there's a lot of things interesting about it. Uh, it's it's one of the most recent ones that's come out, 1998. And what's, it, what's cool about that is it's the last year that's available to even be sold publicly. After Ricky Williams won it in 1998, in 1999 they started having the... The, the athletes sign uh, documentation that they uh, that it could either be passed down in their family, but it could never be sold publicly. Just like the uh, they do with the uh, the Oscars and the Grammys. Exactly, now, so they've been doing suit. Yeah, yeah, they've been doing that with the Oscars since the 1940s. So uh, the Downtown Athletic Club decided they didn't want to see any more on the <laughs> on the secondary market. But as far as I'm aware, this is only the seventh one that's ever been available publicly. We were lucky enough to sell one last year. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Clint Frank. One of the earliest yeah. ones. Third one awarded, uh, yeah. the Yale running back. So, I mean, if you've got a Heisman out here, where else are you going to take it than Heritage Auctions? HA.com. There you go. So, uh, 
Yeah, and you went to the University of Texas? I was actually there. Uh, this was my senior year when I watched Ricky win the Heisman. So it was this one's <laughs> this one's personal to me. Yeah. Special uh, meeting. Yeah, so absolutely. it's been on Chris's desk since it came. <laughs> uh, very valuable paperweight. But uh Absolutely. And the, and I told my wife record yeah, that year. Yeah. You know, this this could be uh you know, if thing, you know, I'd, I'd love to love to take this one home, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of UT fans out there who are saying Absolutely. the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely, we have a lot of UT alums that work here. A lot of people have been taking pictures with it, but not many can afford something as prestigious as this. A uh, one of a kind item, as our description says, it's the most recognizable individual award in sports. It is. I mean, everyone. Everyone, it's a great conversation piece. Everyone knows what the Heisman is. Everyone, everyone recognizes this trophy immediately, and it is, it is substantial. I mean, anytime, you know, if, if I wish I could, like, when you pick this thing up, it's 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 forty Almost pounds. Almost forty pounds. Yeah, it's forty pounds. It's it's uh, it's a pretty crazy, pretty crazy item, and and we're very, very happy to have the opportunity to offer it, and uh, it's going to find a new home tonight. Yes. Yeah. And everyone out there watching the show, I'm sure, has done this pose. Since we've gotten <laughs> these, I've noticed a lot of people do it wrong. Tony, do it. There you go. Nailed it. Ooh. Nailed it. There you go. So, How many uh, times did I try that and fail? Many. <laughs> uh, we rehearsed that for two hours Ooh. before the show tonight. Didn't get it right once. But you got to protect the ball, Tony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, can't, I, ball. I can't leave it exposed. Oh, man. Oh, do we have a Heisman question? Well, it's not a Heisman question, but we do have a question from someone on YouTube. Asking, they have a signed Joe DiMaggio check from the company is Yankee Clipper Enterprises. What is that mm -hmm. company, and if it's legit, about how much do you think it'd be worth? <laughs> the, <laughs> I know a lot of those. I mean, you made Tony speechless. It's, no, it's, uh, uh, almost an impossible. Off the top of my head, I would say about three to five hundred dollars in that range. Um, you know, that was the company that they kind of marketed some of his stuff toward the end of his life, uh, some of the lithographs, and he did signings through them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a nice thing to have. It's a nice medium to have it on, have mm -hmm. a signed check. Uh, a lot of signed baseballs, but not as many of the uh, checks. And it also depends who it's made out. Well, it's made out to him, I guess. So, But, uh, <laughs> no, a uh, very nice item of, of Dimaggio. Magnus yeah. is getting all choked up. She's so, very... <laughs> so Tony's speechless for 10 uh, seconds. Yeah, and... it kind of caught me for a I second there. choked up about that too, Tony. <laughs> but, anyway, the Heisman, this is one of those items that it's not a conversation piece it is the conversation if right. you have this right uh you're just going to stop down everything you put it in your house in your office wherever you're going to put it put it in your car i mean put it on your dashboard why not <laughs> you, why don't you do what you like but it shocks and awe we've had it for a few weeks here in the office and still every time i see it I mean, I get a little choked up about it as well. It got a lot of attention at the New York office in the did. window. We had it yeah. at our uh, New York office. If you're in the New York area, our New York office is at 57th and Park in Manhattan, and they have rotating displays in the front windows of all of our, all of our 40 departments, and on occasion it's ours, but you should swing by there whenever you can, take a look. But this was there. Uh, of course, it's awarded at the New York Athletic Club, so it went back home for a moment, mm -hmm. and then tonight it's going to find a new home, but that's not the only Ricky Williams item we have tonight. That's right. We've got some other hardware from Ricky's career. Uh, his 1998 Doak Walker Award, uh, which is uh, which he was honored with for two years in a row, 1997 and 1998. Right. Uh, Ricky actually became good friends with Doak Walker before he passed away, um, and that's a local award here. For, uh, uh, you know, Doak went to SMU here in Dallas, and uh, so it's uh, it's close to the heart of a lot of Texans. Um, and he wore. Doak's number in one game. He did. He wore number thirty-seven. Really? Yeah. Yeah. For uh, for the Cotton Bowl to to honor Doak. You know, Maj, that's right. It was at yeah. the Cotton Bowl. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. He had a great game. I believe it was Ole Miss. Yes. That's and, I, and I believe he. <laughs> I, well, I remember. On memory it was. Lane here, it guys. was. It I'm was. Uh, he had a great. It was game. a rainy day, very cold, <laughs> and and I still. I mean, and there was a lot. I, I think Ricky single-handedly knocked at least three Ole Miss players out of the game. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but but uh, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look Probably at the tape. Just to guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's also his 1998 Walter Camp Award, which is all, uh, which is presented to the the best college football player of the right. year. So, so the Heisman is the most, most outstanding player. Exactly. And the Walter Camp is the best. Correct. And that is a cool looking award as well. I'd never seen that before until it came in. 
and it's got some old timey players. Yeah, uh, ball carrier, and he's getting tackled. Some great mustachery on yeah. that. Pre helmets. Pre helmets. Yeah, uh, that's the one that says it goes back in time. Right. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that, and that's the only version of that Walter Camp Award that I've ever seen available for auction, available publicly. Yeah, I've never even seen it yeah. before. And yeah, I've got a Ricky Williams item here. I mean, not as wild as this one right here, but very significant as well. There you go. You can kind of see a picture of that Walter Camp Award if you've never seen it. You'll never forget it. But uh, this is a 2000 Ricky Williams jersey retirement presentational game ball here. And the last game ball he was awarded, mm -hmm. and it was uh, when they played Oklahoma State on September 30th, 2000. They beat them 42 to seven. Sorry, Cowboys fans. But another great Ricky item. Not everyone can afford a Heisman or right. Walter Camp Award, but this is a significant item from his collection too. When his jersey was retired, deservingly so. So for UT collectors college football collectors, football collectors in general. This is a cool piece. Uh, we estimated it at about 2000 and it's closing tonight as well. All the Ricky Williams items are closing tonight. They are the first few lots in the auction if you're looking at the catalog or sorting by lot number, which very interesting. Congratulations if you're doing that. <laughs> um, at ha.com, of course. But we've got some other great Ricky items. We have his Miami Dolphins MVP right. award, which mm -hmm. is a very cool statue a, of Dan Marino. I was going to yeah. say, I wrote that one up, and I remember it was a yeah, beautiful, a very beautiful. dynamic pose, too, of mm -hmm. Dan Marino. So some great Ricky items. He's one of the greatest players in collegiate history. College history, definitely. And, and a great pro, too, over yeah. 10,000 yards. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, but, you know, outstanding pro career. Yeah. And great commentator, too. He's, he's you know, doing he can, well. He can do it yeah. all. Yeah. So uh, He had to be the only player that one team traded their entire draft for. Yes. It yes. had to. Yeah. That was, Although that's how that Heritage was... got you, Tony. <laughs> to trade a whole draft. I was the player to be named later. Is that <laughs> what it was? I think, maybe. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about some other items here. I mean, I could talk about Ricky Williams all day, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. All but, uh, Tony, what do you got over there? I've got a 2000 Brett Favre. Oops. Oh, wow. From Thanksgiving Day. I remember watching this game. This what is a think? throwback, right? It's a throwback jersey, and this is the one that, when I think of this jersey, it is photo match, and it, um, it's got all the bells and whistles you'd want. Um, oh, you know what I think about on this? I know what you're going to tell me. The turkey. Exactly. John Madden. <laughs> Him and Amon Green are after the game, yeah. and he's he's eating on that turkey leg. Are there any grease stains on I this? I didn't see it, <laughs> but it is photo matched, and uh, you know, any Favre jersey, of course, has significance. This being photo matched from a game, which he won on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, it's got an 8,000 estimate. A kind of a simple design because it is a throwback, mm -hmm. but um, it is game specific, and uh, it's a very large jersey actually. For uh, uh, far, we're in a size 52. Wow. Back in this time period. And he wow. usually had him tapered, right? He did yeah. actually. Yeah, he did. He did yeah. later in his career. He did. So I guess the yeah. throwbacks they didn't, uh, they, didn't they have didn't, time to do that. Not as much customization, right? On it. Yeah. But uh, one game use on it, photo matched. Very nice Brett Favre jersey, and uh, I believe this has an 8,000 estimate. And it's got a, it's got the uh, game footage, and it's got everything else. A letter from Guy Hankel, who is considered one, the Packers expert. Mm -hmm. So a very nice Brett Favre. I remember, Tony, when Brett Favre was inducted into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> we were at the National Sports Collectors Convention in Atlantic City. I, Our whole team is there. We were all going out to dinner, but not Tony. He had I had to stay in and watch Sit that. in his hotel room, and... <laughs> Like a little hey. I, had, I had a box of Kleenex. And, <laughs> no, no, it was a uh, yeah. It was, it was great to see him go in, and I mean that's that's my childhood. You guys had the Cowboys, who were, you know, had their huge run. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so you have a plenty of Hall of Famers from those teams. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk some baseball. Chris, if you want to talk about that baseball right there? Oh, this is a cool one. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I love this ball. This is uh, this is Ty Cobb and Tris Speaker. Dual sign baseball. Um, I love the stylization of the Cobb signature on this. I mean, you could tell he took his time with it. It's dated October 10th, Toronto, 1928. And, um, you know, Tris Speaker and Ty Cobb actually 
started playing together in 28 in Philadelphia. Right. And they were both big hunters. So I suspect, we don't know exactly why they were up in Toronto uh, in October 10th, but I suspect it was probably for a hunting, hunting exposition, right. expedition. Seems likely. Yeah, yeah. So this is a beautiful ball. It's even, you know, it's, it's, it's really... Um, just the balls in, in general is in great condition. It's uh, very lightly toned. Um, the signatures rate eight, eight or better. The cob I would say is like a nine. Um, it's just a beautiful ball altogether, and great display piece. Um, and two Hall of Famers, two 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 uh, two members of the first 1939 Hall of Fame induction class. So they'd probably be in the Hunting Hall of Fame. I mean, there you go. <laughs> there you, you go. Wait. And competitive too. Could you imagine that? Yeah. Oh, that must have been. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't miss anything, probably. They're probably a great shot. Yeah, I, I can imagine. The hand-eye coordination is pretty good between Ty Cobb and right. Tris Speaker, I would imagine. So. <laughs> a cool little side story on that as well, Yeah, uh, how they came together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's an interesting description on this. I actually learned something from this, that they were actually... Um, we're here to teach. Yeah. Really well <laughs> hey, here. that's what's Auctioning one of the... Auctioning stuff is on the side. Uh, what's one of the cool things about doing this is, is reading the great... Item descriptions that that Tony and and Jonathan come up with. No, we said on Jonathan this. does the good description. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, they they were uh, actually you know several years after the 1919 Black Sox scandal, there was some uh, Cobb and Speaker were implicated in uh, in throwing a game, uh, the last game of the season. Uh, in huh. earlier in their career uh, as well, and, and nothing really ever came of it. I don't know if there was some behind closed doors meeting in the commissioner's office or anything like that. Well, but Black uh, Cobb seems like a totally above board, jolly, <laughs> jolly fellow that would never do anything like that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, check out the item description on this one. You might might learn a thing or two. It's yeah. pretty cool. And I've got another uh, outstanding signed baseball. This is a 1923 Christy Mathewson single signed ball. And those are just incredibly rare. Yeah. Any collector of any kind knows uh, his early passing and eight decades. Uh, there's just a very few out there. Uh, Jonathan Great at Research found out that less than five Matthewson single sign baseballs have been offered by major auction houses in the last 12 years. Oh, wow. So jump on it while you can. Uh, it's just a rare opportunity. And this one has a cool story as well. It's from Braves Opening Day. Uh, Matthewson had, was the newly sworn in president of the okay. Braves and they were playing the Giants that day. It was opening day for the NL and he threw out the first pitch and this possibly could have been that first pitch ball. There's a little usage to it That's as cool. well. And uh, six out of ten signature, which is nice. And so a lot going on with this one. I mean, his signatures are incredibly rare on baseballs, but opening day, he was with his new team. He was as the president. Yeah. He was going to pass away very soon after this, so not much time for him to sign balls after that. And he was playing the Giants that day, his old team. So very unique item. Any Matthewson signed ball is... Incredibly difficult. And when yeah. you can pinpoint when it was signed. Right, the uh, date. That's a, that's a really cool thing as yeah. well. Yeah, an opening day right there. Everybody loves opening day, right? Should be National Holiday. What was the year you said? 1923. 23, okay. Yeah. Just to drop cool. in, uh, the Ricky Williams, this guy hit up to 300,000 right now. So, wow. So uh, your magic is working, <laughs> guys. This is y'all's magic. I just opened the door. You guys, <laughs> just, you guys, you guys walk through. You just stay out of the way or what? No. <laughs> I mean, that's the plan. Kidding. That's why I'm sitting over here. <laughs> so what we've gotten here, Mike Trout game used throwback jersey. Yeah. Um, this is modeled after their, their, their early 80s look. Um, Trout, undoubtedly the best player in baseball right now. Um, now the organization just got some just got some good news with uh, Joe Madden becoming the manager. Yep. So I, I think that's going to help them, and maybe he'll finally get to the playoffs, back to the playoffs, and maybe get a World Series, and that would make his stuff just even hotter than it is right now. Um, shows pretty good use with a little bit of staining on the front. Um, it's got the MLB hologram. And I believe this jersey is also photo matched. So add in all those. And it's the whole uniform. It's yeah. the whole uniform. Mm -hmm. It's the pants that are unwashed, and there's some great staining. Yeah, they're nice. Infield dirt, uh, trout stuff, uh, bats. You know, are in that fifteen thousand range. I could see this going in uh, right, right around there as well. Uh, not a lot of trout stuff out there. 
and one that you can pinpoint it when it, it's photo matched you know there it's it, it should do extremely well and um you know the throwback is cool it, it is just, yeah I mean, it's a great look picture nolan ryan wearing that. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's a great great look and you know it does show use as well has the name on back that and logo be, on the sleeve is cool with yeah. the halo around the yep. state yep exactly yeah this is um and he's kind of a throwback player to, to be honest with you yeah he really is yeah so. Fitting, nicely done. Five uh -huh. You should have uh, written that description. I did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I did. I'll have to go back and see. All right, let's talk about that five-tool player right there. Oh yeah, here's the original, one of the originals with uh, with Willie Mays. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this is iconic. Everyone knows this is Mickey Mantle's rookie card, um, but. You know, someone had the foresight in the 1990s, I would I would imagine, uh, to go to a show and have Mickey Mantle sign his 51 Bowman rookie card. Um, and these are few and thing to do. It was, yeah. absolutely. Time. Especially in the absolutely. 90s, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, to have a Sharpie just go across his 51 Bowman rookie card, um, it didn't happen uh, too often back then. And that's, uh, luckily someone did it. And, uh, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of these out there. Uh, but when they do come up, they get a lot of attention, a lot of interest. It's a beautiful example. Um, and, and I think the last few, we've offered three right. recently. And the reason they keep on coming up is just because they are so sought after. And the prices keep on going up. So I think we've, we've had one that, great, that the signature rated a nine. That sold for $66,000. Um, this one's rated an eight. I think it's currently in the 20, I think it's a 23,000 hammer right now, uh, the last time I looked. But it's just a beautiful example, a great display piece. You've got the iconic rookie card. What could be better than his rookie? The blue Sharpie looks a great signed rookie. on there. Yeah. And uh, he did a good job. He signed all the way across the card, so a nice big signature. Didn't get his face, didn't get his bat, just the perfect spot right through the middle right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just wonder the guy who got it signed, how many people pulled him aside and said, what are you doing? A ton. <laughs> I had to have been. I mean, just yeah. back then, you did not when do When you were that. lying right. at the show, oh. there's people with balls and bats, and he's right. holding that, and I'm sure yeah. he's getting hell for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that, that, that's one area of the hobby that's just went, did a, a complete 180. Right. Getting cards signed. And yeah. some of these rookie cards are impossible to find. Yeah. You know, even some of the current guys, the guys who died early, you just can't find some of those, and that's a beautiful, beautiful example. Let's hear y'all's opinion on signed cards. Uh, go ahead and chime in there. I'll tell you, some of the coolest displays I've seen, if, if someone collects a specific player, um, I've seen it with Nolan Ryan, I've seen it with Mickey Mantle, um, where they have, from rookie, their entire career. Every card. Every year, signed. every card signed. It looks great. It's very cool display. And tough, yeah. tough to do. Tough yes, to do. Yes, absolutely. Tough to put together. And we're going to talk about a signed card display here in a moment. Uh, but first, we're going to switch to another unique signed item, uh, which I don't have on hand right now, but you guys can see the picture right there. Oh. It's a 1970 Roberto Clemente signed TWA envelope. So a strange item to be signed, but July 1st, 1970, somebody was in the airport. Good eye, they caught Roberto Clemente there and got signed what they had on hand, their TWA en envelope. Nice signature right there, we're saying 8 out of 10 on it. You can see it's PSA authenticated, of course, but that's just a great image of the 70s mm -hmm. right there. Clemente signature on a TWA envelope. They have that cool logo. And to think about a player like him just walking through the airport, I don't think like you're going to see Mike Trout going on vacation, walking through the airport, no. and get him to sign your Spirit Airlines. I envelope. think it was That's signed. It was signed. I think you. I don't know if he was going to San Francisco or where, or where he was going, but it was during the baseball season, and it was you know during one of the late. Oh, he was going to a game. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Because wow. I I looked it up when we you know when we did the research on it. And hmm. Yeah, he was. You were researching. And stuff. I was. You, See? <laughs> you. Yeah, so very cool. It comes with a letter of provenance from the consigner. It's been in their family for a while. Oh, nice. Keepsake. And uh, so it's a very unique item we've got there yeah. for Clemente collectors. How about you, Tony? Not quite as cool as that. I don't okay. Know. But still, pretty, still pretty neat. Uh, Michael Jordan single signed baseball. 
Uh, he did have a little run in minor league baseball when he took his detour from the NBA for what? Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Two seasons. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, this kept is, under wraps. You this. know who knows about that? Houston Rockets fans. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Very good call. Knicks fans. That's the only and way they got the ball. They were so close to. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, Jordan's kind of faster in in person autograph, not the sit down version. Um, the ball is snow white. It's just a yeah. really nice. Uh, it's hurting my eyes a little bit. <laughs> Uh, Jordan's pretty hard to get to now. Uh, he, he, you try him? N- I know there's never, some athletes you stock. I've so Bryce Harper. I try to get a lot of restraining orders out there. <laughs> but Jordan, uh, he doesn't really do as much as he used to with upper deck. Um, he still signs occasionally, and uh, you know. But with the security, it's really tough him. to get a, him on a baseball. On a baseball, right. it's very very difficult. Upper deck did a few signings with him, but um, he just he's just so hard to get to now. And he's yeah, he doesn't really do much public stuff. He's never really done much public stuff. So this is a, probably a six hundred R baseball, but very good candidate for uh, grading. Yeah, it's, it's a nice a, ball. It's a gorgeous Jordan single. All right. So speaking of signed baseball collections, let's talk about that Ted Williams Flair collection, which we're not bringing out because it is it's massive. massive. It yeah. is huge. It's one of the biggest pieces we've ever had. <laughs> we had to carry. But you can look at the images here, and you can go to ha.com, or if you're already there, and click and take a look. A really special piece. It really is. I mean, it's the iconic 1959 Fleer Ted Williams set. It's 80 cards. Um, and you can really tell. I, I love this piece. A, it displays amazing. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the frame that was put together for it, the display for it. They've got uh, two of the, the packs from the 59 Fleer uh, series. Yeah, uh, the packs right there in the center. Right. Um, with it as well. And you can tell... You, I mean, I, I, I recommend going online and blowing it up and looking at all the signatures because Ted took his time with this. This isn't like, you know, I'm doing it at a show and I'm just blowing through these as fast as he can. He looked at these cards. He figured out the best spot to sign it. He didn't sign over his face. He signed in the corner. Right. Like, he signed every card. It was the best position to put that signature. I took a look at every single one. You're right. You, yeah. you know, it was, uh, it took some time. must have been something personal he did for someone like that because, you know, at a show, he's not going to take his time to shine all 80 cards right so well this one was personal this is this is something he did for uh and it comes with with provenance it's from uh it, it, he did it for dick gordon who was his uh his signing agent and uh, and a friend of his mm-hmm. so uh dick had him sit down at some point and 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 make the you know to sign every card from the from the 59 Fleer set and i don't know if there's any other ones that I, I've never seen any. I mean, there's there's few cards there's out like there this from the set, right? For sure. Exactly. There's it's a few. A you can find some of the cards from the from the set, obviously signed by Williams. But I've never seen a complete set put together like this, and especially in this condition. Yeah, yeah and it's tailor made for your office, your man cave, something like that. Yeah, and you're gonna need a good amount of wall space for it for both of them, but really unique, interesting piece. If you're a Ted Williams fan. Must have. Yeah, come on, this is a must have. That. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We took that. that in at the National, and it's one of those things, you know, we see everything, but that came in and it stopped down our yeah. whole booth. Even people that were just visiting our booth were saying, what is that? Yeah. You know, and everyone was inspecting it, and I like the unopened packs. In there As too. a centerpiece. The, right. right cherry right on the, the top. Middle. Yeah. yeah. Really there's cool. one in each. All right, now I've got another huge piece I'm going to talk about, which I also didn't bring out because <laughs> I'm lazy, and it's huge, and I... I did kind of want to see Tony holding it up. But what is it? It's a 1907 Chicago Cubs versus Detroit Tigers World Series panoramic photo print. And this is a really impressive piece. I remember the day this came in. Uh, I spent a good 15 minutes. I mean, it was still work, Chris. I <laughs> but just checking it out because it puts you right in the infield stands right there. Great shot of all the crowd, and I love looking in these vintage photos at the crowd and what they're doing and comparing it to how crowds are now. And what they're and, wearing. Yes, I mean, and it's what they're wearing. so much different than what it is today. A lot of hats. A lot of hats. <laughs> a lot of hats. And interestingly, in this one, you can see a lot of people wearing white bandanas, mm. which when it came in, we were wondering what that was. We were researching it, and Jonathan, our great researcher, found out that the home team... Uh, was wearing white caps, so it was in solidarity that okay. everyone was wearing bandanas and handkerchiefs like they were wearing white caps. Okay. So, you know, the uh, they should have got behind that as a souvenir, maybe something <laughs> for the next game. Who the knows? marketing wasn't quite what it is today, <laughs> right. so back then. It's... So it's 1907. It was the fourth World Series. This was game two, 
Game one ended in a scoreless tie due to darkness. Wow. And after 12 innings, 12 innings of scoreless baseball right there, that is dead ball era. <laughs> <laughs> that is a testament to the dead ball era. But this is 45 by 23, so it's a huge piece. And Cubs and Tigers, you've got Cobb is at the plate. Wow. Jake Feister is on the mound. He had a 1.15 ERA that season, led the NL. You've got Tinker, Evers, and Chance in the field right there. Very so cool. So a lot of huge names. You can see them good. Uh, if you blow it up, <coughs> Cobb's far away because you're in the stands, but distinctive stance. You can tell it's him 100% standing there. You know he's glaring 100% also. He's glaring. And But what I love about it is the fans that are right there in the front of the photo, the vintage clothing. There's a few of them looking back at the camera, which was fairly new technology at the time. And one of them yeah. just looks bewildered at the camera. So a very cool piece, an outstanding display piece, and very large, very impressive. And if you're a fan of old-time baseball, this is something you got to have. And the, the clarity is awesome. I mean, yes. that's what's really cool about it. I mean, is, you know, go online and blow that thing up and just looking at the faces, looking at, um, you know, like you said, you can get all the way down to the players. Yes, yeah, so you can see on our imaging, you can right. see the fans in the outfield, yeah. too. So yeah. you can go deep, see what everybody's wearing. A lot of hats, as you said. A lot of great mustaches, which is one of my <laughs> favorite things about that era. It's sublime mustachery <laughs> and a very cool piece uh which is going to be closing soon let's uh we got a time check over there taylor it is 929 929 so you got about 30 minutes left we're gonna keep rolling tony what do you got All over right. there this one i'm not gonna take out of the holder yeah please don't. it's a 1923 green bay packers stock certificate the team is of course owned by the fans or it, it's it's publicly owned and uh through the years there were times where Times were really tough, and they had to generate money. And uh, this is one of the one of the ways that they generated money. This is from the first stock sale. We sold one last auction, our platinum night sale, for thirty thousand. And this one um, should do right around that same. Um, has some has some folding in it. Has some marks on it, but um, just an absolute piece of Packers history here. And uh, signed by Andrew Turnbull who was the Packers president of, of the time. And there's a ton of NFL teams that are owned by the public, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Right. But, I mean, back in this time period, you know, there's a lot of teams that were here and gone. Uh, the right. early NFL teams, teams, a lot of them didn't last. Right. And, small and that's why football. they did that. Exactly. So they could raise some money and uh, um, kept them afloat. And they've had, I think, five or six stock sales. And there's no really value, you know, they really don't own the team, mm -hmm. but they do have these, and uh, this is from the first one, and definitely uh, the most sought after one. I mean, there's only been, how many of those have ever been we had We had one, we had the last one, which yeah. is Platinum Night. Other Summer. than that, there's been a couple private sales, right. but as far as hitting the auction block, this is probably the second one wow. that's ever hit a major auction. Right. So most of these, you know, they, they would get sold privately, and they stay in private collections. Right. These don't really um, make it to the auction. All well, and often. I think this one, one of the reasons it made it to the auction block is just because the last one did so well. The right? last one, it was on the front of the Green Bay Press Gazette, and it generated wow. quite a bit of publicity. And I think that's why this one did come in. Yeah. So. Shout out to the Heritage PR team. <laughs> yes, yeah. they do a fantastic job. Very and cool. I'm going to beat all our fans to it. Tony, how much Packers stock do you own? I have none. None? I have none. I thought you were a team supporter. Guess I not. haven't bought into that. I'm sorry. <laughs> he hasn't bought into I like the, the uniforms. Yet. I like the autographs. Not the stock certificates. <laughs> I wish I could have that. But <laughs> <laughs> but you can have it. You can bid at HA.com. There you go. Extending bidding is going to begin in about 30 minutes. you got to have your bids in before that. And once you do, you can continue bidding. We have the 30-minute rule. Chris, you got another great item from session one tonight. I do. I love this piece. This is, and, and vintage, vintage photography is, is, is super hot right now, and it has been for the last couple of years, but this is, it doesn't get much better than this. This is uh, from 1915. It's Babe Ruth's rookie season, and this is the pitching lineup for uh, the, the, the Boston Red Sox as they were heading into the World Series that year. I think it's uh, uh, Foster, Carl Mays, Ernie Shore, and a rookie Babe Ruth. And he's uh, got a great look on his face. He does. Photo. He does. God, he's so he's young. Uh, yeah, he's young. He's thin. 
uh, <laughs> and he means business. He's not, uh, there, you know, there's no smiles in this. They're, yeah. they're getting ready He's to go to the He's got his hat a little series. askew. Yeah. He's ready to go. Yeah. I love it. It's Underwood, Underwood photo. It's a type one. Um, and this is the last day of the season. This is uh, October 7th. Uh, and they were going to Philadelphia to start the World Series the next day. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so they were. It was business. There time. was no right. Exactly. There's no lag time. We're not. We're not waiting for TV. <laughs> They're getting down there. This has been a long season. Let's play the World Series. But it's. Just, I mean, again, the clarity on this is amazing. It's really cool to see a rookie Babe Ruth up close. That early um, Ruth stuff does incredible. It really does. Uh, you know his his you know his early rookie season postcards. Um, we're selling well into five figures. Uh, the nicer examples are going into six figures. This is an, this is a one of a kind type of photo, uh, and it's a great image of Ruth. And uh, yeah, it's available right now. It's closing tonight. Yeah, I think it's in uh, uh, I think it's in twenty something thousand right now. But uh, it's got room to move. This is a great piece. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've got a great photo too. This is a 1939 Jimmy Fox signed. George Burke photograph type one and it'd be valuable just the photo but you've got a nice signature there from the second member of the 500 home run wow. club and renowned Chicago photographer George Burke he's one of the favorites of people that collect photography and because he takes beautiful images and uh, just an outstanding image of Jimmy Fox got the home run swing a little bit of a smirk too on his face which uh, he knows. He knows what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and a cool, very large photo as well with a nice autograph. Jimmy Fox, right there. That's a great shot. Yeah, good shot. Tony, what do you got? Drew Brees, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time from 2011. Wait, no. I gotta make sure I get this right here. Yeah, yeah, get your facts right. Yes, it is 2011. Yeah. I saw the 07 on here, but what they did is they would they would carry these over for multiple years on end. Um, 2011 game used jersey with the beautiful Captain C patch as a four star general, no less. <laughs> uh, this has been photo matched to three games. Oh wow! And um, uh, December 18th, I believe, is one of them, and then there was two other games as well that it was. Photo match too. This right now is at around eleven thousand. I think it's right around ten or eleven thousand. Um, although he is hurt right now, he will be back this year. And if he, you know, he's he's going to own most of the of the quarterback records by the time he does retire. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look really close right here, there is a team repair, which for a quarterback jersey is not very common. Uh, rarely do they wear these. To More the extent than, where right. they have repairs on them. Yeah. So uh, this is the nicest Breeze I've ever seen. And three games from, I mean, if you want a Breeze jersey, it's going to be a Saints one. He was with the Chargers for a few years, but, I mean, he really put this organization on the map. The Chargers gave up on him. That they did. A, that was a mistake. <laughs> he had a bad shoulder, <laughs> yeah. and he was too yeah. small. Yeah. And, uh he proved everybody wrong. Yeah, a, a really nice quality Drew Brees, just like you, Tony. Yeah. So, so we don't we don't typically talk about clients unless the clients make it public. So I can say that Drew Brees is a client of Heritage, and oh, yeah. it's very cool. Drew Brees went to Purdue. He's a Boilermaker, and we offered John Wooden's only known. He played John Wooden played college basketball for Purdue in the 1930s. And John Wooden's Hall obviously player, Hall of Fame, yeah, a well, Hall of Fame coach, obviously yeah. for UCLA. But uh, but yeah, uh, Drew Drew uh, purchased the the uh, the John Wooden jersey and donated it back to Purdue, and it was very cool. He publicly made the donation, and uh, yeah, it was a neat it was a neat uh, experience. Yeah, I so, mean yeah. where it should be absolutely and to have one of their yeah. biggest alumni, yeah. you know, donate it back. It's a really good feel good story. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Drew, thanks for watching the show. <laughs> you have any comments? One of our top fans. Hey, yeah. 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 Uh, that, you should take a shot at that jersey too. Take it back where it belongs. In your collection. Donate it to Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'd love it. <laughs> All right, what do you got there, Chris? This is another Roberto Clemente piece, and it this is a game used bat uh, from Clemente, and he really hammered this thing. This is a uh, this is a PSA DNA ten. Um, there's a lot of uh, ball marks. There's a lot of stitch marks in this. Both sides of the barrel. You can see it Ooh. there. 
Yeah, you can see it wow. all over. He does um, work with that. Absolutely. He used this during his uh, MVP season, 1967. Uh, it's got the vintage uh, 21 on the barrel. You can see on the end of it there. And, uh, and it's got the, the classic uh, Clemente handle. The flared so, knob. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. the flared knob. So, I mean, it's got all the Clemente traits you could want. Absolutely hammered. Great use. MVP season. And all his PSA power 10. numbers went up that season. It and did. you can see it on that back right. right there. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, he was absolutely smashing the ball with this with this H&B. And, uh, yeah, this, if, you, if you need, if you want a top-notch Clemente bat, this is absolutely, one. yeah, an example for you. All right, and I pulled out a bat just real quickly that I thought was interesting. Uh, we have a few non-sports items in the auction, and this is an Alan Shepard signed bat, the Apollo 14 astronaut, and uh, we have the Neil Armstrong collection at Heritage in our historical department that we've been selling over this year. So I've learned a lot about astronauts of late. I've called a few of those auctions. And so I saw this. Very cool. There's a lot of people that collect astronaut autographs. Um, Shepard was on Apollo 14. He's passed. He was not a big signer. And this is a really unique item to have him on a baseball bat. So if you're a baseball fan, a baseball collector, and you're also into space, who isn't into space and NASA and that era of NASA in the 60s, this is a very cool item. Shepard signed bat. I mean, it's amazing how even like entertainers signing baseballs, you know, baseball kind of goes hand in hand with everything. Right. Yeah. And it's presidential you know, signatures yeah. on people baseball. People love to sign right. baseball stuff. Baseball's yeah. bats. He put the Apollo 14 inscription on here mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. nice autograph from him. It's like a nine possible, nine out of ten. Very cool piece. All right. Let's talk about that Olympic medal. So yeah. Things let's are pull this out. So this is a very controversial Olympic gold medal. And this is from the 1972 Olympics in Munich. And, uh, you know, the, the Russians, the, the U.S. team, the U.S. hockey team, everyone knows the miracle on ice in 1980. And, uh, and beating the Soviet team with our young team was, was one of the most iconic victory sports victories in, in our olympic history uh and this is essentially the yeah. the opposite of that <laughs> yeah this is this is this is this is the first loss that the u.s basketball team ever had in international play um 1972 munich olympics and not only that is an extremely controversial ending to that game um you One know of the most controversial endings to any olympic of, event. of any, absolutely yeah. absolutely so you know the, the U.S. was down by five at half. Uh, we got down by as much as ten points in the second half of that game. Uh, we worked our way back. Uh, Doug Collins goes to the free throw line with three seconds left in the game. We're down 49-48. He sinks both free throws. We go up 50-49. to uh, The Russians uh, call a timeout immediately. Um, First, you couldn't. They tried to call a timeout while he was shooting the free throw. You can't do that in international play. You, and so, you know, he hit the free, hit the free throw. They call a timeout immediately. They put three seconds on the clock. The Russians lob the ball down. It's a it's an errant pass, and buzzer goes off. Game's over, right? No. The referees <laughs> decide, and I'm I'm not sure the exact reason why. But they they decided there a challenge review. There was I, I, this was before replay, right? Before replay, uh, but they decided to, for whatever reason, put three seconds back on the clock and give the Russians another shot at it. And so uh, they they did. Uh, they this time they connected on the lob, accurate uh, pass, accurate pass, layup, uh, and they end up. Uh, the final score is fifty one fifty, Soviet Union wins the game. Um, it was obviously very controversial the way it happened. Crushing um, I don't think, I still believe that the U.S. Olympic basketball team's silver medals are in a vault. In, in Sweden. In Sweden. They never They've never been, never been collected. Um, but this is one of, this is the only gold medal that I'm aware of from the Russian team that's ever been available and offered at public auction. So this is um, from, you know, one of the most memorable uh, Olympic basketball games in history. 
uh, and this is a gold medal from that Soviet Union team uh, when with that I you know with that very memorable victory over the US team. If you're an Olympic collector that's a huge moment in, in Olympic history uh, whatever side you were on it right and any gold medal is significant right a major sport and a notable game a huge moment Cold War is involved a lot of political interest geopolitical a lot, right. a lot political, of emotions which right. tony loves to get into <laughs> <laughs> that'll be next time but no there's so many emotions and even to this day i mean when you hear doug collins talk about don't that, ask yeah. doug collins he gets fired up yeah. and <laughs> as i'm sure would all of his teammates and uh yeah it was a uh, it's a very infamous game yes yeah absolutely US, uh, so if you own a miracle on ice gold medal from one of those players what better yeah. dichotomy <laughs> the, the to have game, exactly right? on the other side of the library <laughs> with this Russian 1972 gold medal? Unbelievable. <laughs> I keep on saying Russian. It's it's the Soviet Union yeah, in Soviet 72. Union. Yeah. We're going to get a ton of complaints. Magnus, are we getting any complaints about that? Okay, good. <laughs> They're showing unusual restraint. Are we getting any complaints about that comment? No. So I've got a Olympic item, Olympic U.S. basketball Olympic item on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the game right there. This is a 1960 Daryl Imhoff Rome Summer Olympics game worn and signed USA basketball team, and this was the Rome Olympics, widely considered one of the greatest amateur teams mm -hmm. ever put together, and they won the gold medal. Of course, in fact, they average margin of victory was 42 points well wow. so they pretty much steamrolled their way through those olympics rome olympics was also muhammad ali's cassius, cassius clay olympics. yeah yeah and so hugely important olympics for american basketball that team had a lot of firepower it had oscar robertson jerry west jerry lucas walt bellamy and daryl imhoff who was the center Hmm. And he was first team All American. He was the third pick in the draft. He was an All Star, and the starting center for the Knicks when Wilt dropped a hundred points. Oh, wow, so, very not good. Not exactly Mike. a claim to fame <laughs> for him there, but notable. <laughs> but a great style with the red, white, and blue. Of course, obvious usage on it. He's added the autograph on the front, and some staining mm -hmm. bit, yeah, the nice thing know. is it's that beautiful Doreen material right. it's Absolutely. not the mesh that they went to in the right. 70s right. it's just it's such a classic look it's and got uh, the Wilson tag yeah. there on the tail and it's a whole uniform got the short shorts so Tony the satin said shorts are they wear. satin or are they, they Doreen look, they appear shorts. to be okay. satin oh, yeah yeah Right there. That's the one time where the, where the shorts are almost as nice as the as yeah. the top. We, you know, we have that beautiful satin with the Doreen. The built-in belt. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that takes you right back to Hoosiers. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony said earlier he'd wear short shorts. So the winning bidder, let us know if you want uh, Tony, well, I don't know if Tony yeah, to try those on. We'll make it happen. I don't know if I could fit Only with guys. your permission, of course. <laughs> oh, but after you're going to do that disappointing American basketball loss, I had to bring this one there out. There you go. Oh, people. Yeah. And uh, so the Daryl Imhoff game worn jersey, and we have an Imhoff that works at Heritage, one of yeah. our execs, and I can attest he's not a great basketball player. So <laughs> don't not as good as you, Mike. Don't think he's related. <laughs> All right, Tony, what do you got? We've got a 1997 Green Bay Packers Super Bowl 31 championship ring, and I know we've talked about rings before. This is before the. We, once in a while, we've talked Sounds like about. Sounds like you're trying to propose to <laughs> Mike. Uh, <laughs> you know, before the Patriots kind of took this thing and just just went way too gaudy. It was a more of a simple design, mm -hmm. and uh, this was the Packers' first Super Bowl in 29 years. Um, to guys my age, this is like the signature team. Where was Tony Giese for this? I was at my mom and dad's. I was not I was 20 years old at my mom and dad's watching the game, and then Chris Narrett, who is a consignment director at Heritage Auctions, and I went to return to Title Town the next day, and it was so cold that they didn't get there until about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. The sun was down, and we froze. <laughs> but it was a great life, life moment, which we'll never forget. This was actually issued to Lamont Hollenquist, who was on the special teams, um, was a backup linebacker on that team, and uh, did play for a number of years with the Packers. Through a key nice. block. So it is a player ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a, it's a player cool. ring. Through a key block on Desmond Howard. On Desmond Howard's Because that game TD. could have gone either way until yeah. that um, kickoff return touchdown uh, toward the middle of the third quarter. Uh, and it has the presentation box as well. Uh, and we've this, got a couple other of his items. In yeah, we do. We have well. the wife's ring mm -hmm. i think we have that a couple as well jerseys yes yep 
So he's so. a vocal leader. He was. Team. He was. He was one of those crazy linebackers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. How much time we got? Let's do a time check. Thirteen minutes. Thirteen minutes. All right, Chris. Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. As always, um, you can make your way back to the ivory tower. <laughs> 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 but Chris is a great boss, and we appreciate your time. We know you have clients to talk to, so we're going to take a quick break remember 10 p.m central time so 13 minutes from now you got to get all your bids in before then and then extended bidding will begin and you can bid all night long <laughs> if you like so we're going to take a quick break here's another word from our sponsors i think that was the original version of the line Heisman trophy the goal of every gridiron goliath who's suited up in the accoutrements of a pigskin warrior yeah, I've worn pigskin before. I once got lost on the outer limits of Burning Man, searching to find myself, and had to spend a week surviving on only my wits and guile. After my cliff bars ran out, I had to go mano a mano with boar. Let's just say fortune smiled on me. And three days later, I walked into an Eagleville 7-Eleven. Garbed in a vanquished porcine adversary. So yeah, I've worn big skin before. Never won a Heisman though. Hey, what are you doing in my car? Forgot your eyes, Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? And we're back. Welcome. Back to Between Two Turn Styles. I'm Mike Provenzale. Here, all alone. Tony had to take a break. I told him to quit looking at the screen, so he stepped off screen for a moment. And we're going to let you know that extended bidding is going to begin in about 10 minutes. So anything you want to bid on, anything that we've been talking about this time that you're interested in, you got to get your bid in right now. And a reminder, we have session two tomorrow. So more incredible material, same rules. It's going to be 10 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Session two will begin. We've got some unbelievable items in session two as well. And we're going to talk about some of them later, but we're going to keep going with session one right now. And I want to remind everyone that if you have items that you want to be presented like this in this catalog, online, on this show, give us a call. We do free appraisals on any item. We can tell you what it's worth, just so you know. And if you're interested in selling, of course, we can help you out with that as well. HA.com is where you go, or you can give Tony a call. I'm sure if you've talked to him, you've got his cell phone number already. Uh, give him a call. Not right now. He can't talk right now. I can always talk. What are you talking about? But we're going to bring out one of our other esteemed colleagues, a man who does a lot for Heritage Auctions <laughs> and Heritage Sports Department, Mr. Jason Simmons. In fact, everyone else, I had to, during the commercial break, set up their items. Jason, he's a man of the people. That's right. He does it himself. He brings <laughs> as much it on as I can. right away. Thank you for joining us. It's a, it's a pleasure, uh, Zach. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> you're you're more you handsome. Thank you for catching the very <laughs> subtle reference yeah. we have here. You're more handsome in person, I must say. <laughs> and less humorous. <laughs> Much and less humorous. Poor. But that's I right. could go on. Yeah. Uh, Jason's worked at Heritage for a long time. He started in the client services department. Correct. So, uh, <laughs> 
despite being battered and bruised, right. he made his way to the sports department. Learned a lot about the company. Uh, that was that was the the highlight of it. That's the, that's a good sign. <laughs> I can tell you a lot of negative things later on, but uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, it was a good way to start. It was a good uh, uh, place to learn about the uh, the hobby itself and the business. I like to tell people that uh, it took me growing up to realize that I could uh, have a kid's job, and that's really what happened uh, coming here. So. And now you have a kid as well. Uh, yeah, that's Congratulations. True. That's true. A future baseball <laughs> star, right? I yeah. hope so, yeah. <laughs> we named him Brooks, so he's got big go. shoes to wow. fill. So, After yeah. a friend of Heritage, Brooks Robinson. <laughs> that's right. So, that's right. Brooks, <laughs> big fan. Thanks for watching. He's watching Brooks. tonight. For yeah, sure. he's been that's texting right. me about it. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into it. What do you got first there? So Mike, I'm sad to say uh, my uh, my operation skills are decreasing. I was not <laughs> able to find this beautiful ring that they're seeing on the screen right here, so I can't show it, but uh, yeah. Uh, this was consigned to us. This is the, uh, the 2003 Patriots Super Bowl ring. Consigned to us, it's, uh, it was presented to the scout, uh, John Howell. And it was uh, consigned to us by his son. So, of course, this is the second uh, Super Bowl Patriots ever won. Uh, excellent game. So the Super Bowl itself is most known for the halftime performance where there was a wardrobe malfunction. Oh, that's the... Just to wow. put that in your mind. But, uh, sure. yeah, so uh, fantastic Super Bowl as well. Uh, it, was a, it was an interesting ending. I mean, Venetieri hits the, hits the hits game the, winner. Yeah, field goal. time with, expired. I think there are a couple of seconds left if you want to be technical about it. But, yeah, mm -hmm. it was an absolute game-winning field goal. They scored... Uh, uh, one thing about that too, they didn't. There were no points scored in the entire game, uh, like 12 minutes into the second quarter, and they ended up scoring. I think the final score was 40, 42 to 39 or something wow. crazy like that. Yeah, they scored 80 points in the end of the game without almost going first. That's half incredible. That score at all. Oh yeah, that's incredible information. It's such great offense too for the Patriots. Everybody knows that with Brady lighting it up for. Who? And, and, <laughs> You've heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> and those Patriot rings, I mean, they continue to go up in value. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're 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 gonna when that's all said and done, they're gonna be the yeah. franchise. Well, with no so many what. so many dang diamonds on them. They're I know. <laughs> just the <laughs> phrasal value the alone. Intrinsic value is almost of exceeding thousands. the yeah, collectible exactly. value of it's it. It's amazing. But yeah, so this is before they Tony mentioned the kind of gaudy style that they've gone to recently. I like uh, this one a lot. I do. I like these. Better. It's still simple yet. Right. Yeah. yeah it's and not, they've got a great logo. This is one of the so last ones. Yeah, it looks so great. It's to me, it fits perfect with the NFL logo and style and all that kind of stuff. Not quite as good as the Cowboys, but definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely right not. But up it's up there. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Way better than Packers. I mean. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of Cowboys, I'm going to go ahead and pull out a ring here. This is a 1971 Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl VI championship ring. Any Super Bowl ring is significant. This is a beautiful one. I love the design on this with the big diamond in the middle of the star, surrounded by the diamonds. And any Super Bowl ring that says Cowboys is great, right. as anyone knows. But this one's significant because it's presented to founder and owner William Hahn who was a businessman, a philanthropist, a horse breeder, as you are, <laughs> uh, just perpetuating some Dallas stereotypes yeah, right. right there. Yeah. But he was one of the founding partners of the Cowboys with Merchinson and the others, right. and he maintained his interest in the team until 1984. Wow. So a long time uh, member of the team. They won two Super Bowl titles during his tenure, and... So this is one of the most significant rings from one of the most significant and important franchises in the league. Yeah. And it's got his name right there on the side shank, as you can see. And a classic design right there. It's 35 grams and size 11, if you're wondering. So yeah. if you're someone who likes to wear these rings when you win them, and why it, wouldn't you? It's a conversation right. piece. Yeah. It's something that it just draws eyes, draws attention. Right. And I mean, it's, it looks to be in really nice condition as right. well. So I was you know, there's times yeah. you'll see these like rings. like you wore it too much. Yeah, yeah where yeah, they'll those, be worn those, out. Those yeah, rich guys, the, they got a lot of rings. And so stuff, you know, <laughs> it's hard to choose. You can't wear them all every night. <laughs> and he had two. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, they won two. So maybe you like the other one better. <laughs> yeah, so first one but right But the first here. one is always. Yeah, yeah. yeah special. What do you got over there? Okay. Here? Another one of the, a very proud franchise. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. This is from their... They've won a few This Bowls is the one well. for the thumb, I think is what it was. That's that was right. the, the mantra, or I guess you would say. Um, their fifth Super Bowl title. And um, it's funny, I'm reading a book on Art Rooney right now. Yeah. And it, Tony Reads, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'll tell you, that, that organization was going nowhere. 
up and right. you know from, they started in thirty three up until nineteen seventy until they got Mean Joe Green and yeah. um, Chuck Noll. That franchise was going nowhere. Bradshaw. What's that? Bradshaw, Bradshaw. yeah. And um, then they had the seventy four draft um, and forged a dynasty in the seventies. Mm -hmm. And they got it back in the two thousands. And this is from their win over the Seahawks, I believe. Yes, twenty one ten. That was in Detroit when the bus. Uh, made his final, right. made his final stand. John Alexander, was yes, the, uh, star for the Seahawks. Thing. Yep. Um, this one right now is at fifty thousand uh, dollars. I could see it going for, you know, sixty to seventy even. I think um, it's going to see some action in extended. Data. It it will, yeah. And it's funny because when I when when we started the show, I think it was at thirty grand, and it went up to fifty. At this point, or thirty-two. And now 000. Tony Geezy's talking about it. So. <laughs> and watch, touching. Watch it very, fly. <laughs> it's gonna double, right? No. Uh, Tyrone Carter, uh, a fairly good player for that right. team, um, had a long association with the Steelers, and comes with a, with a letter from him and the original box as well. Uh, just a oh. classic design and uh, in very good condition and uh, a letter from him is a, le a letter from that? him too yeah. yep that's yeah. yeah. great so, addition we are going to yeah. have his other super bowl ring that's in a platinum night so. tony Geezy promise right? yeah that's a little exclusive yeah. for you but uh, beautiful ring and um, you know from a just a proud proud franchise the pittsburgh steelers yeah do a time check real quick. Where are we at? Get now. Yeah, getting close. Two Nine, two, two minutes. Eight. Two get them in. Get them in. So hit another item there, if you will. <laughs> what do we have next? I believe it's a baseball. <laughs> just going off with the, the Matheson. Yeah? yeah, just off the top of my head. Oh yeah, we had a couple of Matheson items earlier, and this is a really cool one here. Gotta love this. A Matheson single sign baseball. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, and especially with such a dark signature, this thing got turned around in this case here, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, you take a look at the picture. Here, on the but screen. yeah, look at the picture on the screen. It's just absolutely stunning. If you uh, if you really zoom in on the, that whole thing, the the darkness of a signature like that. Of course, the ball's you know been around for it was a 1910s, right? Yeah. yeah. So ball's been around for over 100 years. Of course, it's going to have a little bit of uh, soiling and and staining and all that kind of stuff to it. But uh, the signature still stands out. But when you have a Matheson signed ball, right. it adds a little bit to it that is right. this age, tone, Ex historic exactly. looking ball. And you know the history of this individual as well. For someone that um, stood for the character that he did, um, true gentleman. Yeah, We've got a painting of him right here in our life. <laughs> that's actually, right, him and, and his wife, and his tragic war <laughs> fatigues yes, there. War so fatigues. yeah, uh, but yeah, at a time that that's not what the league was really about. Uh, it's a bunch of brawling of, drunks. Exactly, I believe yeah. is not that him. what's been he referred to. Yeah, before. exactly. He managed to keep his uh, his wits about him, his temper, and all that kind of stuff. So and he was well educated. Yeah, yes. well educated was he? The Sunday matinee idol? What was it? I think that was his nickname. I was just made that up. No, <laughs> I, I, I have to, have to, did not make it up. I think it was the matinee idol. You can't idol. make up a nickname for matinee. someone that died Look almost a hundred years ago. <laughs> Look it up. I think it's the matinee idol. I think it's call me crazy, but I think his nickname's Matty. <laughs> no, <laughs> but there's also that the Big gentleman sister. hurler. I've also heard. I've heard hurler. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> make this look that one up, please. I believe. Internet, please help. Internet. The matinee idol, I believe, was his. But as we talked about, Matthews and signatures on baseballs are hard to come almost non-existent and, you know. and not to mention a single sign yeah incredibly difficult and they're you know t they didn't do team sign balls back in that time right. period and you know for people to to, to to just get him on a ball right you know you'd get him and you might get one of his teammates right but to have a single a true single yeah very very difficult. these are the kind of lots that i love because it just keeps piling up it's all that right and then it's also from his actual playing career it's not yeah. post career it's yeah. you know it's it's yeah. all those things combined in one which makes it so rare so fantastic so yeah that's a great item in this auction absolutely Moving on, I'm going to talk about an item I don't have in front of me, but you oh. can see the picture. <laughs> and this is an early 60s President John F. Kennedy signed oversized original photograph. And what I love about this, I mean, it's got a great signature uh, from JFK, black ink signature, but that image is spectacular. He's yeah. just jovial. He's lighting a cigar, got the flowers right there, a that. great happy image of... Uh, Unloving president, I yeah, think his reputation. Really. Upbeat, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, an oversized photo. It's uh, ten young. by fourteen. Mm. Young man. Yeah. Um, his whole life is ahead of him. Can well. you say that? <laughs> well, not exactly. We thought so. But uh, a nice signature on it as well. It's on the matting. The signature. 
great display oh, nice. piece. It was to Sony's a photographer, work. right? That's correct. It's for it's to, to the, photographer. the photographer who shot this image. And a nice. very you know, and a, a little backstory on that. That came in to the National Sports Convention, uh, and you know that's one of those pieces. It, it yes, it wasn't sports, but JFK oversized photo. You know, with a beautiful signature, and that kind of drew all of our attention when that yeah. came in. I yes. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, a beautiful. cool item, and extended bidding has begun. It's on, folks. So, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Tony immediately turns to look at his screen. Uh, that is Bucks preseason basketball you're watching. I there, swear Tony. to God, it is not, Mike. <laughs> I promise. So, the 30 minute clock has begun. If you're unfamiliar, 30 minutes. Countdown for every lot. Anytime a lot is bid on, that 30 minute clock is going to reset for just that lot. Every lot will stay open until it goes 30 minutes without a bid. So, this is where you can take into account some of the gamesmanship and wait to the last <laughs> minute or bid immediately, make them think you're I'm not gonna, slowing, you down, not yeah. slowing down. I'm right there behind you. <laughs> yeah. If you're lucky enough to live in Hawaii, you've got a real advantage right now. <laughs> it's sure. still the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. And you live in Hawaii. Congratulations on all your success. <laughs> but Anybody who has questions about items, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you on our Facebook page or on YouTube as well. Do you guys know we're on YouTube? I, I heard that. Somebody had a question, I think, earlier yeah. today on, on YouTube. We're just so. all, all over this. Boy, all yeah, over this I, I never scene, thought yeah. I'd make it on YouTube. <laughs> You're famous. I, I'm You're famous. famous. <laughs> I, am, I, no. I can't tell you how much YouTube I watch of wrestling uh, videos and interviews from the 80s. And so. hey, don't listen to all those people that told you you had a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> But you can still bid freely on <laughs> Session 2 items as well, so you can check those out. If you get outbid on something and you're not going to go any further, go over and check out Session 2. Some more incredible items there. Right, yeah, the, the, there? Uh, just not to uh, <laughs> nope, jump in here, but the jump, Yankees jump promotional mod are 55000 right now. Wow. So wow. this is where everybody kind of, you know, they wait till the very, 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 very end. Yep. And this is where... You know, That's a fancy people. nodder. Is Absolutely. The only thing it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> That's one John, you, you almost need to see that in person yeah, yeah. to Jonathan's get the to, to really exactly get the right. full effect. That's the finest of yeah. the finest. We were talking about that with the Madison ball. When those kinds of items that were all the great details just stack up. That's the best of the best. That's a one on one. If you collect that kind of stuff, you gotta have it. You gotta have it. So, yeah. You're not gonna That's find another one. one. Uh, Hope, I don't have my list here in front of me. I oh, think let me help you out. Oh, let's do it. Well, the nice man. You are Kansas City Blues. Team oh, what about Joe DiMaggio? Yeah, I like this one too. Oh, did we, we got forget? Jolton oh, Joe. Oh, go ahead. Jolton oh, Joe yeah. DiMaggio. <laughs> Let me get the hero sing. Game worn um, Yankees jersey. Uh, if you look here. That five right there on the back. Yep. Yeah, special. Yep. Okay. Um, it's from the 1940s with the DiMaggio and the collar. Um, as was customary for this time period, um, it was stripped down and sent down to the miners for use, but um, it has been restored to the with the proper New York and the famous number five on the back. Um, so it, it is a period restoration. Uh, they did a wonderful job on it. it uh, I believe it's a five and a half is, is the final grade on this. But um, very few, Joe, of course, Joe DiMaggio game used Yankees jerseys, and this is one of them. Um, this one, I believe, it's a 40,000 estimate. DiMaggio so. jerseys are wildly expensive, so this one's been restored. That gives a few more people a chance. To yeah, exactly. DiMaggio yeah, you're not going to have to spend uh, you know, 150, figures. 200,000 yeah. on it. This but, one's a little more affordable, but that, and, but it, it's also what they did back then. You oh, know, absolutely right. There's that's nothing, what they did. They sent them to Scranton, yeah. or they sent them to the minor league affiliate. There's nothing fabricated about it at all. Exactly. Just exactly. Back yep. to what it was. Yep. But and it's still such a fantastic display piece. If you have a Yankees jersey on absolutely. display for any collectors that have that hanging up in your office, your house, or wherever else. Everybody that comes into your house is going to stop and look at that and ask the story. What's yep. you know what happened? Yep. You know, what and I mean, it, I I love the way that that they did it. You know, I mean, they yeah. this is the felt that they used, yep. and it looks it, it, it's proper. It's not something that was you know done in the eighties. Right. You know, they yeah, they right. they took their time and did a really nice job on this. And you know, I love the back as well. I mean, with that with that with that number five. So classic jersey deserves to be on a mannequin or. In a museum. So, yeah. See, Tony owns a mannequin service. I, so. I have mannequins. <laughs> like, he keeps, he keeps the pushing side. the mannequins. <laughs> no, I need mannequins. If anybody has them for sale, <laughs> <laughs> please help you guys up. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about Kansas City. Well, that's actually a good. Watch this professional segue. Take notes. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, 
So we just saw the uh, the great number five for the Yankees. Tony, can you tell me why Mr. Mantle or number six originally for the? It was uh, the batting order, wasn't it? Well, that's why they gave Ruth and Gary those numbers, right? Well, the other other ones would have been retired. Oh wait. So whenever. Well, Mantle yeah, Ma yeah, Dimaggio would have Yankees. been number five. Uh -huh. Mantle come to the Yankees because that's one of the greatest stories about the Yankees, right? Is that the years of succession of all these players. Of course, Ruth and Gary overlapped a little bit, but. DiMaggio came in right as Garrett was going out, and then Mantle came in right as DiMaggio was going out. It's amazing. Uh, so anyway, this is well Kansas planned. City. Right. Yeah, <laughs> they knew what was <laughs> going on. It's Are you amazing. kidding me? So anyway, the, it, a lot of people may not know this, but they uh, gave Mantle number six for that same reason. They wanted him to go in succession of this great, you know, uh, order that they've had so far between Ruth, Garrett, DiMaggio, and Mantle. Uh, but. As a lot of people do know, that he had a little bit of a slump uh, after he was called up for his first, whatever it was, 20 games or something like mm -hmm. that. So um, He uh, needed some more seasoning. Exactly. Some minor league seasoning. <laughs> sent him needed. down. Uh, and most people know this story as well, that once he was sent down, uh, he got discouraged and decided he wasn't, you know, he thought he was going to hang it up. He blew his chance, yada, yada. Uh, and his dad came down to see him. He, he called his dad and told him, I'm coming home. I'm never going to make it. His yada, dad yada. mutt. Mm. Was his name? Is that right? I didn't yes. know that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cold. Worked in the mines. Yeah, I mean, he worked, worked in the mines. Right there. Yeah. Ouch. Give him some tough love, I think, is what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always thought Mickey was bad. I guess. <laughs> 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 much, much better. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, uh, his dad comes down and, you know, talks some sense into him and says, you got to give it a shot, et cetera. And of course, everybody knows the rest of the story. He comes up and uh, is, is one of the greatest players to ever play the game. So this ball is from that short time that he was down with the. Uh, uh, the wow. AAA affiliate, the uh, the Kansas City Blues, I guess they were called. But anyway, so pe everybody loves a vintage Mantle signature, uh, and that's exactly what this has. Um, you know, that's, again, it has such a great story of where he spent his time down there. It, you know, his career could have ended. It could have been done at this mm -hmm. time when he signed this baseball. His dad talks to him. He comes back and plays. He hits, you know, almost 420 home run, whatever it was, and, uh, and goes up to the... Had a bright uh, future. The, the big leagues afterwards, and yeah, did great afterwards. So. But there's a lot of Yankee sign balls with Mantle out there, but such right. a limited window for this That's a good team point. sign right. ball. Yeah, right. yeah. dated to that, Everybody, just to yeah, that, exactly. that, that two months he was probably down there. Yeah, everybody wants That's the true. earliest Mantle they can find. Well, this is one of the earliest out there uh, ever. So, And a little side note on that, uh, uh, I can't remember who they were. Andy Carey uh, and somebody else, a couple of other well-known uh, Yankees were on this ball as well. So it's not just his autograph. So. In a vintage program. Yeah. In there, I so see yeah, well. just to kind of complete the lot, they threw in a program and tickets and stuff like that. Um, the Ooh, program nice signed by Mantle program. as well, I like that. Uh, which I love. The early photo of him. Yeah, I don't want to tear anything, but it's got a, it's signed, such too. a young. Yeah, Mantle signed it. I this like that. Later, the Take so a look at it. You can see, yeah, zoom in and see the full view. But it's such a young. Bright-eyed man. <laughs> those are like lunch tickets that we had when I was in uh, grade school. That's yeah, what, that's what that reminds me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk about a cool photo, which is kind of fragile, so I'm not going to take it out, but you can see the image right here. This is an 1885-86 Cuban Giants team-mounted photograph, and it's one of the most incredible tre treasures of the woefully underdocumented Negro Leagues that we've seen. This is a beautiful piece right here. You've got the team <coughs> photograph, they're dressed in their finest clothes, and uh, they were in St. Augustine, Florida, city I used to vacation in, beautiful city. Mm -hmm. And you've got the backdrop of the Castillo de San Marcos in the back, which is a uh, Spanish fort that dates to the 17th century. I didn't know you were bilingual. Yeah, that's right. Boy, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so that just whole, a pretty face. my whole life in Texas. So that's where that comes from. <laughs> uh, so many of the Cuban giants worked at the Ponce de Leon Hotel in St. Augustine. So a lot of them lived there. They played there. Um, an amazing photo right here. They're considered the first salaried Negro League team and certainly one of its premier franchises. Yeah great history so <laughs> cool piece of history there's 13 of them imaged right there including john milton dabney who was the original owner of this photo as indicated by the vintage handwriting on the back nice. beautiful so beautiful yeah. negro yeah. league items are really hard to come by right. and especially photography from that era and 1885 right you're just not going to find another piece no. like that. No, right. I mean, you might see some from the 20s or 30s. Right. 
but from that way back, from that yeah. far back, I didn't even know there were Negro League. I mean, that's you know. what we call yeah. museum quality. Yeah, exactly. there, that's yeah. a piece that could be in a museum, and tonight you can put it in your collection. And you're exactly right too. Photography, especially, you know, not many people were asking them for autographs. Not many people were taking their pictures. And there just wasn't a lot of photography stuff. during that sure, era. Sure, right, yeah, fabulously right. expensive. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> yeah. the Negro Leagues woefully underfunded so yeah. there just wasn't a lot of team photography and a lot of it didn't survive yeah so. and there's, there's just not much did. stuff out there from the negro leagues to collect exactly and you know a lot of the yeah. higher end stuff that stuff is in the museum yeah. right know, the negro league museum or, or in private collections yeah. all right tony what do you got over there the old professor <laughs> casey stangle <laughs> yeah, this one. was it's actually from his caretaker his last few years in, in life um from a, an associate. Uh, this came from them, and uh, a great early look at Casey Stengel. The ma most of the times you see him as an older man, as a manager of the Yankees, and then with the Mets. But this is an early look in, into his life as a sailor. I couldn't remember seeing a photo of him this young. Yeah. We actually have one coming up uh, that's going to be his baby photo, but that's oh, a, wow. that, oh. that, that one. We, you guys have to wait for that one. He probably still looks like he's 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great call. But, uh, yeah, just a really neat uh, photo from Casey Stengel when he was just a youngster. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people who collect baseball memorabilia or any athlete that's tied to the armed forces. Yes. Right? yes. And that was a great era for such things. And Stengel is a baseball legend, a baseball lifer. Right. And a lot of players from his era served in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool it is. military related I mean, piece right You there. almost think of Ted Williams a lot of right. you know, he was a, a pilot. Right. And you see, you know, you think of like Hank Greenberg and some of those yeah. guys and Willie Mays and the for the and war. A photo like that you know, they weren't mass producing those. That's something it's Probably the mounted. Only the only one they had. His right. family held on to it, of course. Right. See a mm -hmm. lot of people who are in the armed services that their family members have right. Photos like that, and so Explain probably a one of a kind item that was right. on display at his family's house, maybe right. his mom's house, while he was away. Yeah. Right, interesting, beautiful piece. item. Yep. Yeah. yeah, noble people for sure. It's an yes. interesting. I always love how baseball in the United States just kind of grew together. It's just such a great story to me. So yeah, war Let's was get war was it. a big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the uh, Ken Burns documentary. It's fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this uh, war stick here. There you go. God, man, I should take notes. <laughs> Do this for a living. <laughs> well, maybe not a war hero, but definitely a hero. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. maze, buddy. <laughs> Beautiful maze. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, graded a nine by the uh, the PSA bat expert, John John Tobby. So, uh, yeah, it's got it all. This was, uh, what, 65 to 67. Uh, which included an MVP season, which included, you know, he hit 52 home runs, uh, over 100 RBIs, I think, in every one of these years. Still played all right. Yeah, and this thing's just got, it's got everything you want. It's got cleat marks, it's got, you know, bat racks, it's got hit marks, it's got everything. It's like uh, Chris was talking about the Clemente bat earlier. It's just, you know, this thing's been to uh, been to battle and been his weapon of choice for a while. So, yeah, yeah, Tobby gave it a nine. Uh, this is a beautiful bat for sure. Got his, all his characteristics. It's got the nice uh, 24 on the knob. Uh, you know, model in '63 there, so just yeah, it's a. If you're a serious bat collector, you gotta have a maze bat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely one of the greatest. A lot of people say uh, period to play the game, sure. but one of the greatest outfielders. He's in that sure. argument. With, There's yeah, no doubt. Yeah, five tool player kind of guy. That's the biggest thing. He wasn't just one that could. Uh, he didn't just hit or just field or just steal bases or whatever else. He, and he was he did pretty much the best at all of them exactly. in an era when there was a ton of legends. And for so long, too. You know, people kind of forget about that. He played for, what was it, 20 years, I think, 19 years, maybe something like that, and just good year after year after yes. year after year, the top of the class. So. Incredibly consistent. Yeah, absolutely. And consistency <laughs> at the top of the game. I thought you were going in for a kiss there. <laughs> I want to see the bat. I want to see the use of the bat. Can't be. If you propose to me with yeah. that. Uh, yeah, I've got some rings here. I don't know. Super Bowl ring. I might go for it. <laughs> so I've got something here that Tony's going to want to get close to. Of course, it's a 1970 to 71 Gale Sayers game worn Chicago Bears jersey. Not too many defenders could get too close to him. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Nobody could get too close for him. Uh, he was named the top halfback of the NFL's first half century. Wow. Yeah. Hall That's of incredible. Famer. Least amount of games played for a Hall of Famer. That's how spectacular he was on the field. A lot of injury problems. Um, 
lower left tail has got the Wilson 46 tag and it's got a 1990 letter of provenance from the son a former NFL player and college coach, coach Alex Agassi who was the head coach at Chicago area and Northwestern University in the early 70s. He's one of the guys that if you talk to some of the old timers they say his running style and just the way he played was different than everybody else. Right. A lot of people said ahead of his time. Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, I've heard that, you know, the, the, the Another Kansas potential time, time traveler. Yeah, right. <laughs> back in time, you know, like Ladanian Tomlinson, if he went back to the 60s, people wouldn't know what they were looking at. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, the one I think of is always is, is Barry Sanders from, from our, from our right. you know, our, our era. Yeah. And the guys you talk to say he it was just different with him. Yeah, you right. know, just different than everybody else. I think speed and just elusiveness. Right. And who knows what he could have done if he would have had. And a great you know. pass catcher. That was ahead of its time. Yeah, that's that a great position. point. Yeah. He returned punts. He returned kicks. Yep. He could pretty yeah. much yeah. do anything on the field. They wanted him to touch the ball as much as they could. And right. That, that as well was, like you said, you uh, changing up the offense. They didn't do Bears that. look right here. Yeah. yeah. And then with those with, the, really with nice. the beautiful striping on the sides. And yeah. I didn't so know he was. You said he was the top half material. back of the first this material. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, if you think of how short his career was, and that just, I mean, tells you how <laughs> how impressive he was, and impactful yeah. he was. And yeah. we've sold a few of his jerseys. They're always incredible to see in person. Obviously, with his short career, a very limited number. Of Show him the back of that. I I just love that yeah. name on back. Uh-huh. And you know, I know a lot of people. Were, oh, that that's early seventies. But you know, it just adds a nice layer layer of collectability having that small name on the back. Um, it's right in right when they started doing this that. is helping us assign the year to it the name was it 71 it's, it's date range by the presence of the name on the back which first appeared in 1969 69. this jersey does not have the nfl 50th anniversary patch seven. or any sign of removing thus eliminating that year so that's how we get to seven there okay we go. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Now, if you put that on a mannequin, <laughs> put it with the name on the back, everybody, okay? Absolutely. Next, he's going to start talking about the movie mannequin, which we can get into that if you want. I got a lot of opinions. We got that. a lot of time. <laughs> they made a movie called Man. That's all I want to know. <laughs> a mannequin one and a mannequin two. Oh, my goodness. See, Jason, it's a movie where a mannequin comes to life and has zany exploits. Not interesting. <laughs> Uh, check wow. it out. Check it out. Let me know what you think, people. If you have any opinions on the movie Mannequin or yeah. Mannequin 2, put them in the comments section. Or the Babe Ruth or, or Lou Gehrig yeah. movies. <laughs> you know, Jonathan's got some homework to do. Jason's got some homework to do. we got movie reviews. we got a lot on our plate, guys. All right, Tony, what are you going to talk about over there? The bid's coming in. No, oh, let's do it. Uh, I'm right. kidding. What do we got? we got some fun stuff coming up here. One of the absolute toughest wide receivers... In the history of the game, I'm not saying he was a headhunter, but this guy could put. I'll say he's he a headhunter. He could. He was like a Jim Brown, <laughs> yeah. where he was. He's gonna dish it out. Right. Um, the crack, crack back blocks. I cannot say that again. Careful saying <laughs> that. that on yeah, you. exactly. <laughs> this Heinz Ward jersey is photo matched. That's oh, a beauty. To October 17, 2010, and if you look at the back, no there is kidding. a just. Beautiful helmet scrape on the back of this. Everything which you want. Is, yeah, Any and now this is a throwback jersey. Yeah, but it shows. Throwback I mean, style. it actually shows use of what a guy of his caliber yeah. um, should show. Yeah. And um, this, I think, was sourced from Heinz Ward at some point because he did date it himself, and he put second all time in touchdowns in Steeler history. And he scored um, a touchdown that game. He did. Yes. Fabulous, fabulous jersey. Just, I mean, shows great, great wear from a, a wide receiver with the Doreen sleeve ends, the mesh body. Uh, it's kind of a classic look. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. They they, they were on one the of the sleeves. teams. They they use Doreen. Jeez, even up. I don't know if they do now. Yeah. But they they used it until recently. Yeah, I know that yeah. much further than anybody else did. Yeah. And and again, it's just it's a great look. Such and a great look. Yeah. I, I believe it has a letter from Heinz Ward, and it is photo matched. So um, if you're looking for a top tier Heinz Ward, and there's not a top, Steeler stuff is kind of hard to get right. as far as game used jerseys and that kind of thing. So a very very nice Heinz Ward jersey, and again it is photo matched. <laughs> yeah, the you can't say enough about the uh, hit marks. Oh, I love and, that. Uh, you know, yeah, description on that, everything else. Yeah, that's a, that's a great jersey. And I'm not there. a big fan mm-hmm. of getting jerseys autographed, but that is one yeah. instance where it looks really really good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about another tough player. You got that? Which one we Mike got? Provenzale. Mm. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. From Plano High in 
1998. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Ah, I forgot about this one. <laughs> you gotta do this one. Yeah, absolutely. Look at all the people moving around here. It's a real working office, people. <laughs> There's an auction going on. We're not just Hollywood elites sitting in a sound studio doing, people a, bring doing us a show. Everything. Yeah, we're we're working hard here. We're sweating a little bit. Tony's sweating a lot. Gotta love this. Oh, that's bad <laughs> memories there. This guy. Oh, he's still be showing this. <laughs> this guy. Start crying. Talk about uh, <laughs> Come room, on, room for growth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this thing, uh, you know, I, I don't have to tell anybody else. This guy's um, likely go he's going to a third team, and I think he's going to bring a championship to, I think uh, he to will. the Clippers. Yeah, he, he's that good. He's that kind of level, that talent, where he can. Uh, they got a couple players there now, so uh, hopefully. Is they can there put a more together. unique superstar than him? Right. No. I mean, he, yeah. he, let's it, face it, it, it. He's weird. He's it, weird. In, <laughs> in today's sporting world, in a good world, way. In a good yeah, way. I mean, but in in today's sporting world, it's me, 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 me. Yeah. This guy is. It's a total opposite, and yeah. it's it's kind of refreshing, actually, to see. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. And so there are a lot of Spurs fans who uh, may not feel so fondly of him at this at I mean, this he did get him a championship time. that, you know, That's exactly what Duncan's I was going to say. But you, you, you got to remember what he did mm -hmm. bring when, when he was there uh, and not sitting out and uh, <laughs> nursing an injury or whatever. It was a strange but, uh, Yeah. And that's uh, a playoff jersey. Yeah, this is the playoff jersey. This is when he played the Clippers, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> I think he scored 18 points, six points, just a regular Kawhi effort, you know. <laughs> shut down everybody. Yeah, 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 shut say. down everybody. Get a shot off. The guy's got a wingspan of like 10 feet or something. It's unbelievable the defense that he can play. And then, of course, he can, you know, shoot the lights out. And uh, he, he's the board man, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Five cool players. All right, All right we're going to stick with basketball here. And whenever we get an item, especially game worn material from this guy, you gotta show it off. Yeah, yeah. And that one's yeah. gone up quite it a bit. Has. Talk about a classic style. So this is an 86 87 Dr. J game worn uniform. You got the whole uniform, so some more short shorts for you, Tony. <laughs> All right. Um, it's this classic logo right here the Sixers. You got the Irving and the number six across the back right there. And this is from his final NBA campaign last season. Is that right? Here. And uh, you can see Captain Shape, still the uh, <laughs> slim jersey right there. And nice game wear. Uh, you can see some fraying and puckering. And you can even see a little bit around on the stitching that the red has died over. All oh, those, you're washing that over and over a lot again. Of washing. He so, wore it a bunch a of times. Uh, he wasn't wearing it once and moving on. This one saw a lot of game action from one of the greatest in history. Oh. Got us showed off. You got the whole uniform. Yeah. The short shorts there. Yeah. Um, Talk about wear. Even that yeah, it's great wearing me, the I'd be yeah. embarrassed to wear, <laughs> to wear these. Yeah, if you're Dr. J, you wear whatever you want. That's true. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> He's got the great Sixers have a great logo that they've kept the same, and they've got that on the shorts right there as well. So the whole uniform, one from his final campaign. A lot of collectors, of course, they like the beginnings and the ends and milestones. So here's one from Legend Dr. J. We had the program earlier from his first professional I didn't know we had that. I saw that. Yeah. That is a cool one. That's a beautiful, beautiful one. And then here's the bookend right here. If you buy that program, you probably should buy this too and vice versa. Tony's got some mannequin advice for you on this one. Oh, that one. you have a mannequin that can wear these short shorts? Bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> All right, Tony, you're up. So we have the current Packer signal caller, Aaron Rodgers, and I know we had a. I think How it could was you a, not talk about this. Oh, <laughs> I know somebody was asking on Facebook or YouTube of, on the use of it, and that's a very, very good question. Oh, look at the back. This we do. Strange. This is photo matched to, I believe, 2013. So it it it, in, it comes from NFL auction. So it's got the there NFL go. auction sticker. Um, it is photo match, and if you look on the front here, we do have some football marks. That's from the oils of a football. Oh yeah, rubbing it against him holding it. when he's mm -hmm. holding the football mm -hmm. tight and running it um, with the heavy plasticized NFL shield on the front. The Packers didn't wear um, captain's patches until the playoffs. So oh, really? they were one of the few teams that did it. Now they wear no, the they captain's don't. patches, but they didn't wear it during the regular season. I didn't know that. Um, shows some uh, 
grass staining um, on the on the um, shoulder numbers. So uh, fairly good use for a Rogers. Um, and a, uh, I thought I saw oh, maybe it just was the, yep, the ball that you were yep, talking about. Yep, I thought I saw a hit mark somewhere on there as well. The one you see that we have in this auction, Adrian Peterson. Oh my! Goodness. I mean, he, he <laughs> yes. this thing would be just orange. Yeah. In warm-ups. Yeah. I mean, that's what he, I don't know what it is in warm-ups if he's just holding it that tight to him. But, right. you know, so, I mean, it's got great use, great provenance, photo-matched. You know, these typically go in that fifteen to $20,000 range, just like the Drew Brees in this auction. You know, these are a very good investment piece because you right. know it's legit. It's you from NFL. certainty. You can yeah, see it. It's not an authenticator telling you it's good. You can look at it, match it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so it's got all the bells and whistles you could ever want. And they've already got his bust made up to go in the exactly. Hall of Fame. Yeah. This I mean, he's a sure white ridiculous <laughs> mustache on it. Oh, <laughs> I hope so. Jeez, I can't pull that off. He not can. Many can. <laughs> no. Aaron Rodgers is not pulling it off. <laughs> Incredible player, but the mustache. Yeah. I got you. Uh, is a mistake. <laughs> I think he's a man of bits, so I. I respect bits. So. I do. <laughs> I that one's go gone a little, little too far. <laughs> Although I'm a fan of mustachery. I just think it mustachery. is an actor. Is that like right. I love that term, Mike. You got one more. You got one more. Got one more, and this one is to encourage Great people one. One to stick cool, around for tomorrow's cool bidding as well. I want to end with one that reminds everybody that uh, we got a whole other day of this tomorrow. So. Are we uh, back on the air tomorrow? <laughs> you are. Oh, okay. Uh, you're alone. Yeah. All right. That's, that's what the whole world wants, the solo Yeah, that's show. right. <laughs> that would be the last so, yeah. Facebook Live ever. <laughs> oh, that's a great photo. Isn't that a great photo? I yeah. love, love the Miller Huggins. Look at how tiny he is. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. He's next to Frank Chance, so not oh. a small guy there. Yeah. But uh, still, yeah, Miller Huggins was not a big guy. But So this is 1923, opening day of the house that Ruth built, opening day of Yankee oh, Stadium. That's... So... To me, this is one that uh, it's got the rivalry, the Red Sox and the Yankees Great right there. Red Sox sweater. Yeah, there. I was thinking the same yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah, they're it's both beautiful. looking right at the camera. It's a Paul Thompson photo. It's a Type One. You yeah. Know, again, That's... one of those that uh, just stacks up everything that you want as a, as a true Yankees. And the smile on, their, on 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 Chance's face, yeah. and I mean Huggins is having yeah. a great time as well. And Thompson yeah. photos, he always did a great job of capturing like the perfect moment of emotion right, right. there, and yeah. he does very in good this point. one. Yeah. Very good point. And he kind of yeah. knew when to uh, blur out the background as well. So, yeah, they focus in on the foreground and blur out the background a little bit. And he did that perfect on this so, one as well. Yeah, you get it's, the it's idea. Such There's a, a crowd, picture. but you want everything you can, focused on that. You can um, see the shoelaces on these guys. Like, it's it's crystal clear. Uh, and then, yeah, of course. God, I want to bid on it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, this one's for tomorrow. Jeez. You know, we've, these photo guys. We've been talking about it all night. Yeah, photos are, uh, values are going up great. And they should, yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a burgeoning part of the hobby right there yep. and jason thank you very much for joining us always a pleasure we uh, could do this all i love i love your aspect and the items you pick uh it's about standing ones and thank you for finishing with the session two item yep and i really want that photo now yeah <laughs> <laughs> you two are just oh, totally don't have it, but you guys can have it mm -hmm. and extended bidding is going on right now we hope you're having luck with your items you can still bid on session two items, as Jason said, and that will happen tomorrow night. Extended bidding for session two will be at 10 p.m. Central time on the 18th, tomorrow at Friday. And we're going to take a quick break, and then Tony and I are going to talk about a few items in session two, give you a little preview of those, including some pro wrestling talk. Oh, boy. So before that, we've got a little special treat for you. Do I need to get and dressed we'll be back in, 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 into my <laughs> Put gear? on your unitar. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's a message from our sponsors. Welcome to Between Two Turn Styles with Mike Provenzale. I'm Mike Provenzale. We were supposed to have Heritage Auction CEO and founder Steve Ivey. He's not going to make it. But he had a coin emergency. So we're stuck with, what's his name? Mine. So we're stuck with Mike. All right. Oh, hey. could you go through the turnstile, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. We're trying to uh, keep count of everyone on the show. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be here. That's great. Nice little. It's kind of cool. We're keeping count of how many people are on the show. Oh, how many have you had? One. 
So Steve wasn't in today? No, uh, you know, it's funny. You mentioned Steve was unavailable. I saw him today in the office. But maybe there was something important he had to do, probably. He looked very, uh, very at ease today. Looked like he was pretty casual. Okay. You mind if I move my chair over just a no. little? No. We've got it uh, all set up, you know, for Steve in case he might show up. Is he going to? Nothing? Okay. You know, you understand. Yeah, okay. All right. No problem. So, welcome, Mike. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have all these questions for Steve prepared. Um, well, there might be some overlap. I'll only see what we can tackle. Um. <clears throat> so, how does it feel to be the one who started the world's largest collectibles auction house? Uh, that one we could probably yeah. move move on through. How does it feel to be the uh, richest? So what do you, what do, you do for Heritage? Uh, right now, I am uh, one of our auctioneers, auctioneer trainers, and I do uh, uh, some marketing, a lot of our videos, voiceovers, things like that. So your job is to be inter entertaining then? I guess there's an element of entertaining. In some it. of that entertaining now? or uh, Well, I... When you're an auctioneer, you usually dress up, right? For yeah, typically you want to look uh, look nice uh, for the clients. And uh, it's just like your eighth fanciest suit. Kind of feels like an insult. Uh, you know, I uh, no, I put this on. I thought it looked. Uh, I thought it looked okay. I mean, I wear secondhand ties too on occasion. It's yeah. Actually, this is a, this is a brand. This is a brand new tie. I thought it looked pretty good. On someone, it would probably. Have you ever uh, gone pantsless up there, at the podium? Uh, no, we're no, no. I never, never have. Never really thought about that either. I mean, you got, it's, you got nice supple calves, so I, I'm just you know, I, I appreciate that. That is, that, thank you. That's a nice, nice thing to say. Uh, you married? Yeah, married. Th uh, three children. Did it feel like magic to find someone who liked to hear you talk about yourself as much as you like to talk about yourself? Yeah, you know, that's, I don't really, it's kind of an awkward question. I'm not that person. I don't, I don't want to hear about yourself. <clears throat> so, a lot of auctions are going internet only now. Yeah. Are you ever afraid a robot's going to take your job? Uh, no, I think there's always going to be that personal interaction that... So uh, you think you're better than a robot? Yeah. You know, I, I think, uh, yeah, and that interpersonal Cause, thing. Because, you know, Johnny Five, he's got a lot of personality, but you... So, what else do you do? Well, Heritage is actually uh, kind of a part-time gig for me. Um, I can see why. Uh, I actually split my time between uh, Heritage and I'm a pilot for American Airlines. I wanted to be a pilot when I was in kindergarten. Oh. Then I, I grew up. But it's you hand out the peanuts or the drinks. No, 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 I don't do oh, that. Oh, you got to make the announcements. I do I make mean, the that's, announcements. That's tough. Yeah, I do make the announcements. Well, it's can part we hear, of the job. Can we hear a little bit, a little bit of that? I like that rose pin you got there. Yeah, it's just a little... Steve little. give that to you? Do you have any good pilot stories? Well, you know, it's interesting, Mike. I mean, there's so many great stories. Uh, uh, over the years, I've, I've been able to go to so many places and, uh, you know, I've been in so many situations. So there's really, yeah, I mean, I could really uh, tell you lots of things, uh, uh, some uh, uh, great things. One story in particular comes to mind uh, a couple of years ago, taking off in this uh, huge thunderstorm in the area and just had a lot of make some uh, critical decisions and had a little problem in the back. And, uh, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, Is I mean, that we pen ivory or... Uh, I, I think it's porcelain. But anyway, uh, so back back there at the uh, runway, it was uh, uh, just up. Uh, it's hard to just kind of pick, pick one. You okay? Got you it. Right? You got everything? Oh. Are you still with me on this? We are talking about that pen? No, it's okay. Let, let's, it's, I like that pen. Yeah. It's nice. Thank you. I'm flattered. Thank you. Steve gonna come in? No. Rough landings? I think this interview is a little bit of a rough landing, frankly. 
I don't really like your attitude. I think I've got a great attitude coming here. So, what do you like about working at Heritage? Well, you know, it's Heritage is a great place to work because you get to handle some real national treasures. And you get to uh, be the interface as the auctioneer between the buyer and the seller, and that's exciting. Um, and I think no one does it. Have you ever seen the movie Time Cop? Uh, I can't say that I have, no. Okay. In it, there's people traveling through time, and the same matter can't occupy the same spot. You know, the same, the guy from the future can't touch the guy himself from the past. Sure. Basic physics. I, I don't know. But in the movie, so you're Mike, and yeah. you're an auctioneer, and I'm Mike, and I'm an auctioneer. So if we occupied the same space, would that's you that's should, terrific? I, yeah, I'll you should check it out. Yeah, I'll definitely check that movie out. That sounds sounds great. Okay. I do like that pen. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate it. It's nice of you to say. Can that's, I have it? Uh, no. Oh. And we got Mike, and Mike, and Mike. So you used to do sports auctions. Yeah, they were a lot of fun. Uh, the sports department has uh, since gone to uh, just an all uh, electronic auction, all online. They've taken away the, uh, the, the live auctioneer. So they'd rather have no one than you. Well, I, I guess, you know, if you, you want to boil it down like that, I. I don't know if that's exactly it, but... Like a robot or fake person? Yeah, yeah I guess so. You weren't fake enough? Uh, well, I, I don't necessarily think it was that. I, I just chose to go in a, a different direction. We might all lose our job to robots one day. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I feel pretty secure in mine. So anyway, it's just so many great stories. It's hard to just kind of, yeah. What? Yeah. What? That's nice. Oh, well, thanks. I appreciate, you got, you got everything there? So, you are rambling on about something? Uh, yeah, I think I handle, I think we could probably go to the next, uh, next question. I mean, anything else? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything else, really. Could you call Steve? Maybe I'll be happy to call Steve. Get him on the yeah, phone? Yeah, we'll have a lot to chat about, I think. I mean, thanks. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. This is one, this is one way, man. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Am I right? Thank you for joining us. Welcome back. Extended bidding is going on in our fall memorabilia auction. Tony right now is scarfing down some carne asada. Um, I'm a little jealous, actually, but he will be joining us shortly. Right now, we hope you're getting everything you like in session one. Bids are still going. Tony's going to talk about those a little bit. Once he gets over here, I think he's got to have some chips and queso first before he makes it over. No margaritas, Tony. What are those? <laughs> you know what margaritas are. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a good boy. How was it, Tony? People want to know. How was your dinner? You know what? I walk outside and I take a phone call. One of my buddies, well, one of my bidders called me <laughs> and he's asking for, for a description on um, one of the pieces. And I'm like, uh, let me look it up real quick. <laughs> So he was working, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. He's only saying that because Chris Ivey's watching. We never right stop now. here at Heritage Auctions. 24-7. <laughs> Phone so, is always on. You can still bid on any items that are active that you bid on previously in session one and extended bidding. But 
You can bid freely on the amazing items we have in Session 2, which is going to close tomorrow night, Friday the 18th. Same situation, extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time. And we're going to talk about a few Session 2 items, give you a little preview, show you some things that are in there. And Tony, I'm going to start first, if you don't mind. I don't have the item here in front of me because you can look at a nice, clear picture of it on the screen. Oh, there it is. Ho -ho! I'm just going to look at it. So this is a 1972, 1972 Steve McQueen signed photo. And he's one of those kings of cool like you, Tony. Yeah. Uh, Cooler than me. I mean, a leading man throughout the 60s <laughs> and the 70s. He's just one of those quintessential cool Hollywood guys. Real man's man. He was into cars and Driving race tough. cars. Absolutely. He was in some great racing movies. Uh, Bullet is a great car movie. He's not racing in it. He's a detective who doesn't take any guff. Was he was he better cool than Ruth and Garrigan in his acting or much better? Much better. Much better. Yeah, okay. he was a great actor, and this is a signed photo that's a still from one of his best roles in The Getaway, which is an incredible movie. Have you seen it, Tony? I haven't. You should check it out. I need to get out there and see some more. There was a movies. remake of it made in the '90s with uh, Kim Basinger, and um, who was in that? Alec Baldwin. Oh, wow! And. I love both of those people. That movie is not great, but this original, The Getaway, still stands up. Fantastic movie. It's an important scene right here. You can see he's looking tough. He looks he's got a gun. That's right signed there. too, isn't it? Yeah, wow. autograph picture. So a great 8x10 photo uh, with a nice, strong autograph from him. He has a cool autograph he too. Does. He's got a flourish to it. And if you've seen the movie, you remember this scene. Very cool part. And we often have some non-sports autographs and other material in our auctions. Uh, a lot of autograph collectors like to collect autographs, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. And some of our sports clients like to include all their material in our sports sale. We have an amazing entertainment department. We have an amazing historical department. But we're siphoning some of their stuff for our auctions because sure. it's cool. And it doesn't get much cooler than Steve McQueen right there. Well, this might be a little cooler than Steve McQueen. All right, let's see it. Marilyn Monroe. That's hotter than Steve McQueen. <laughs> 1954. It is amazing what her photography and all the way through her life, what, what this stuff sells for. Um, very, very big premium of anything. She's still of as hot today as she was back oh, then. Oh, she has just dropped dead. The blonde bombshell. Well, I was referring to the market for her material. Oh, I'm what sorry. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, that's it. That's that. I was, I was getting towards that. That was my mm -hmm. next line. Mm -hmm. But uh, just an absolute stunning image of Marilyn Monroe. Um, <laughs> these things always do well in auction. Three, four hundred, even even into the thousands sometimes on some of the really famous works. Yeah, and that's a great image right there. Yeah, yeah. it is. Never gets old. Never gets old. <laughs> so, um, you can hand me that top one right there, Tony. The Macho Man? We're time for, no, the other, yeah, the Macho Man, that one. So 3606 or 53806. Yes. Yeah, there it is. All right. You better you better change your voice if you're gonna if you're gonna describe oh, this. Oh yeah. Ah. By popular request, it's time for pro wrestling talk. Oh. We, we have some amazing pro wrestling items in this auction. It's always time for pro wrestling talk. Yeah. And Tony is an expert. He's an enthusiast. He's a fan. He's a devotee. I would say. Wow. That's right, brother. <laughs> so it's time to talk about this great wrestling material. And we're going to start with this one right here. Oh. There's a reason why I pulled this one out. A, it's the Macho Man, which uh, everybody loves. It doesn't get man. any cooler than that. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's Macho just... Man Randy Savage. This is from the uh, 1990s. This, uh, the NWO. Yeah, WCW days. WCW. So, yeah. Look at these boots, Tony. Um, they're very subtle and nuanced and uh, just understated like most things Randy <laughs> Savage wore. How, can you imagine I mean, getting those on? How long it would take to put those on? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> no. I would love to try these on. Uh, that's not in the job description here at Heritage, but outstanding item. And this is quintessential Macho Man. Over right the top here. wrestling so from that time flamboyant. period. It looks like flames are shooting out of his legs. Um, so you got both boots in here. There's the other boot right there. You got the tights. 
Tell the people what the tights say, Tony. Madness. Madness. And they're signed by Macho Man. Yeah, they're signed here. And these come from him. It's got provenance from him. Uh, dearly departed. Um, but he's one of the favorites. He's a legend. He was a great pitch man. Everybody remembers his commercials. You know, some guys can talk and some guys can wrestle. Very few can combine them both. Yeah. And, I mean, he could... He was one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And his promos are insane. Yeah. He was crazy. My favorite, and if you haven't seen this before, you need to watch it. Not right now, after the show, but just Google Macho Man Cup of Coffee. Yes. The Cup of Coffee uh, speech is probably his best. It but is. there's one other really cool thing in the slot. <laughs> uh, we talked a lot about photo matching earlier, but this is figurine matching. <laughs> Because this figurine is wearing this exact outfit right here that he has. Wow. On. So this comes in the lot as well. Uh, great image of him on the back as well. You can just hear his voice in your head when you see <laughs> that image. The gravelly voice. But you can see on the figure he's got the madness pan pants. He's got these same boots on with the same flair. That is kind of a neat uh, yeah. accessory. So this is a cool addition. Uh, I'm not sure we figurine matched anything before, but <laughs> we have first. this. This is a first. The first. And if you so. look at the boots, they do show some actual real good use to yeah, them. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, back then, I mean, they wore this stuff night in and night out. They didn't. I mean, you know, Tony, if you had boots like these, you're only going to wear them once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to wear, gonna them, all wear the them all the time. I wear these every day if I had. Very them. good. Very good. All right, Tony. What do you got over there? All right, is this is this the one I I, I think it is? Is this my grand finale? Should I? I mean, we're getting there. I mean, we're we uh, are. In Texas. Yeah, let's do the the Kerry Von Eric. Let's All do right. it. There's oh, been a, I have been a lot of interest in this lot. Yeah, there have been, and uh, you know, I'm just talking about from in our office. Oh, but. there are times. When it is very emotional dealing with consigners. Sure. And this was one where there were tears. Her husband. Tony was crying like. I that. was. I was. Our consigner, her husband, was Carrie Von Eric's lawyer. And Carrie had a. Inter, you know, toward the end of his life, he had some issues that he dealt with. And this was the guy who kind of tried to help him get through everything. And he gave him these boots with Carrie on one and the second one. States Von Eric, just stunning. Um, used probably for at, Huge, at least too. a year, maybe more. Um, great use and um, aesthetically pleasing. Just a beautiful, beautiful pair of boots. Um, we're thinking these were worn in the early to mid 80s during his world class championship wrestling days at the Sportatorium, of That's course. Right. There's a manufacturer's label. So he's label. well known to all, all wrestling fans nationwide, but in Texas he holds a special place in everyone's heart. The Von Erich family in general, uh, very closely tied to Texas and Dallas in particular, of course, and the Sportatorium. I wish I, I could love you that. people out there who are nodding when we say the Sportatorium. That was a historic venue here in Dallas uh, that was specifically very influential in local wrestling. And wrestling was syndicate. Sure. It was on syndicate um, in Japan and all throughout the United States. So I watched it on Saturday nights. And my goodness, I mean, I watched the Von Erics growing up. And I never thought I'd be here living right where this all happened. Um, one of those other real surprising things is there's never been any of his stuff that, that has come out for First auction. First we found. I could not believe that. I mean, these guys wrestled, were um, sex symbols in this area. And were wherever well, you got to go there. Well, they were. I mean, <laughs> Kerry was, come on, he was he was the man. Sure. I'm just Texas shocked that... Tornado. The Texas Tornado as well. I'm just shocked that n there hasn't been any other items from him. These are the first, and I, I can't imagine much else getting out there. Um, uh, these have really gone up. I think we did a two or 3,000 estimate. I think it's double that. Yep. And, uh, yeah, just uh, a very cool piece of wrestling history. And um, and these, you know, the wrestling stuff, you the Macho Man, and this, oh, it displays yeah. so well. You can put this... And even people who aren't into wrestling, aren't fans of it, are very familiar with it. Mm -hmm. It's become mm -hmm. ubiquitous. Uh, especially things like the Macho Man, and Hulk Hogan, and Andre the Giant. These men are just sporting legends yep. now. You know, they've... 
it truly is a form of entertainment and they crossed over that line many many years ago mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they've become cultural icons so this is great stuff to display when these came in, even people that weren't into wrestling had to check them out. Oh, absolutely. Look at Take it. a same, photo with them. Same with the Macho Man stuff. Everybody was doing their impression. You know, when we get Babe Ruth stuff, not many people are like, hey, I'm a Babe Ruth. You know, nobody does the Babe Ruth impression, but all these wrestling guys, that's exactly what happens. Yep. Yep. Especially yep. Tony. Tony, let's hear your Macho Man. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so since you're doing that, might as well go ahead and do that other Macho Man lot right there. Where is it? one? Yeah, it's on the bottom right there, that bottom box. See, this stuff I get, it's so easy to talk about. Yeah, you can talk about it all. <laughs> oh, look at the photo on that one's great. So this is the Macho Man from his days in the NWO, black and white. This, was, this would have been late 90s, early 2000s, and with the Macho Madness, these very lightweight tights with stars and madness on the sides mm -hmm. very good use and i believe there are also yes similar to yours yeah see i think he wore those when he's with the the nwo red and black and this is the traditional nwo so very similar uh structure style. Yep, style to uh, the ones the you've same got. Cobbler made these <laughs> 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 and again these show great great use and um you know um from a lot of battles, a lot of uh, a lot promos, of and, yeah. yeah, a lot of rambling. <laughs> mean but, mean. but yeah, I mean, you know, Macho Man stuff. I mean, he it was Macho Man and Hulk Hogan that really took wrestling and just you know brought it to kind of almost to a national scene before it was ter Not territorial. Almost. Absolutely, they did. <laughs> oh yeah, all right. So. Uh, we had some great wrestling stuff in this auction, and obviously we've got some experts in it. So if you have wrestling material and you're looking for a place to sell it, we'd love to talk to you about it. Tony will talk about it on end with you. So <laughs> Autographs or match-worn or yeah. any of that kind of stuff. Of that uh, you stuff. Know, it's not just uh, match-worn. We've done good stuff. with posters stuff, some of the yeah. older vintage posters. We've had some great Andre the Giant first few appearance posters, things like that. Give us a call. We do free appraisals on anything. So... Yeah. We'll f you got an item, we have 40 plus departments, we'll find a, find a spot for it. Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to our bread and butter. Wrestling? Okay. Baseball. Oh. No, that's okay. your bread and butter. Are you going back to your bread and butter? <laughs> I have to go asada? find a couple more items here. I'll be right back. All and right. So this is a very cool item that I saw <laughs> that's in our session two. And it's just interesting and unique, which are the kind of items that I like. And who doesn't? This is a circa 1900 Cap Anson cigar box. And say what you will about tobacco, and a lot of people do, it did provide the hobby with some of the most incredible collectibles in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. And this is one of them right there. It's a cigar box, tobacco box. And if you open up the inside, you can see it in the image. There's Cap Anson right there. That's some good mustachery, Aaron Rodgers. So that's it right there. It's the Fleur de Anson. So his own brand, and the aesthetics on it are spectacular, as you can see. This is a great collectible. This is something, a lot of uses for it. You can display it. You can put it up. Um, but it's going to be something you can talk about. You could use this. Store stuff in there. Hey, store your cigars in there if you're a cigar smoker or your tobacco. Tony, we lighten up a cigar after the after we finish here. I don't like I, I don't like smoking them. I love the smell of cigars. So, um, <laughs> you know, and this box no, still kind of smells like cigars. I'll give it that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it either, but there you go. Very cool collectible. Something in session two, which is going to go down tonight. Tony, stop rumbling around over there. Just come here and talk about it. You don't need it in all your All right, game. all right. You know it well enough. How did you know that, Mike? Yeah. There oh. it is, isn't it in there? Tony, where would you be without our Cameron Taylor? Where would it be without Mike Probenzale? Probably dead in the ditch somewhere. We're going to be very yeah. careful with these. Yeah. Um, these were gifted by Michael Jordan to, 
believe it was one of his drivers, if I'm not mistaken, okay. in the 80s. Have you ever given a gift to one of your drivers? No, I have not. I don't have a driver, though. Um, <laughs> you need one, having been in the car with you before. <laughs> He's right. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe this is the 87-88 season. Uh, just a classic style of Air Jordan. You get both shoes. I'm just taking out the one. That's the um, Air Jordan 5? I believe the so. The Fighter? This is, uh, and what I'll say about these, uh, they're very condition sensitive. These have survived reasonably well. Usually on these, oh, you'll yeah. see heavy cracking um, on, on this portion, namely on this portion. A lot of times I'll have to have them restored. Whereas these have really held up well. They show good use um, and uh, just a great style of uh, Air Jordan shoes. Um, estimate on these, I think, is six or, or six to eight thousand on these, and I I, I know these are, are just a coveted, coveted style. Um, hard to find this this time period, and this is when he was scoring 30, 30, 36 a game. You know, when he was at the yes. absolute height of his uh, scoring. That binges. season, he led the league in scoring, led the league in steals, and went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I mean, he could do it all. He wasn't just a guy who could just score. He that's Play a defense. hot opinion you have right there on Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh, boy. But that model, that was the first for a sneaker to have the asymmetrical uh, collar around the heel there. Okay. And the lace holder. I'm not yes, sure I remember these. It. These were yes. really popular. Yes. As soon as that came out, then all a bunch of different shoes followed suit. They did. But, and um, they, did this in, in, in dip, they, they did this for a couple years, too. Right. I remember. I didn't have them, but... Uh, I remember seeing them. But classic style, I remember when those came out. And mm -hmm. of course, anything Jordan is pure gold. Yeah, and especially game worn shoes. Yes. And if there's one thing Jordan's going to be remembered by, yes, it's the titles and His what pains. he. His <laughs> And what he did for sports, but, you know, the shoes have become a staple for Jordan. And he, as we've said about Babe Ruth, you know, it kind of transcends generations, especially he's known for these Air Jordans and. You know, I today's mean, people players. collect them as new, so to have yeah. a pair that he wore that he wore as well, that really takes it up a notch. Yeah, and in just fantastic condition. So, uh, yeah, these are these are really really strong, and it's a great style. All right, let's do these last two items here, Tony. Got the images right there. Yeah, uh, the photo pen. It's very very small print print run of these things. These were done in the early to mid '60s. Not a lot of them got out. Uh, they were sold in small, small quantities. A company out in Minnesota actually made these things. They're incredibly difficult to find. We had a hog hanner we sold years ago for like $800. And you're thinking, hog hanner? Why? Because there's none of them out there. I mean, um, one of my favorite players. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of my favorite player names. Yeah, that's, that's oh, for that's sure. a great. I mean, that's he just was from such a big fan of bacon. Yeah. Well, he wasn't a wide receiver or anything either. He was. <laughs> um, two of the iconic Packers, Bart Starr and Paul Horning, on the photo pennants. Uh, these usually typically go in that you know six seven hundred dollar range. They can top out. You know they they can reach a thousand if the right guys are after them. If you know there's certain guys who need a Horning or need a a Bart Starr, if they don't have one, they'll go crazy for these because they're very very hard to find. Yes. And, um, you might. You know, you every once in a while you'll see them, but um, they made I think about six or seven different players, and of course these are, are the two most. Those are the two players. you want, right yeah, there. Absolutely. So session two is tomorrow. You can bid on that material right now at ha.com. It's everything we've had in session one: all types, autographs, photos, jewelries, rings, awards, game worn, game used, all sports, all of that. Uh, most of it under $1,000 or under 1500 mm -hmm. So not everybody can afford Heisman trophies, but of course we want to take care of all collectors out there. Mm -hmm. And so, that, yeah, session two, it's going to close tomorrow night. I mean, there's a lot of things in, in session two that go for, you know, multiple thousands of dollars. A lot of, you know, people, you know, wait for that, you know, for that second night for something that they didn't get a chance to get tonight. Right. Tomorrow they have an opportunity to, uh, you know, to take something home. Absolutely. And so we're going to close it up. You guys keep bidding out there. We want to thank all of you for joining us and for participating in the show. We really appreciate it, as always. Tony, thank and you. And our tremendous Set staff here. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of people oh, putting a lot of hard them. work. Oh, Don't I'm sorry. Worry. I didn't mean that. Don't you worry. Don't uh, step on my feet. Hey, here. this is fun. I, I, you and I talk about this off, off, 
you know. It's all we do. It's our <laughs> only talk, job is to but talk we about talk this. about this. And we, when we first started doing this, I'm like, oh, it's kind of neat. Every time, it's it's so much fun, and the time flies by so fast. You know, I, these three hours, four hours, whatever it is, they just I thought it was fly. eight hours. <laughs> really, four hours? It seems like it. No, but I mean, you know, the time flies by because it's so much fun because we do what we love. So of course. And thank you to all of our coworkers, our experts who came on, took their time out to talk about their favorite items. We appreciate that. They're super busy, or at least they always act like they're very busy. <laughs> so we appreciate them taking their time. And of course, we have to give a special thank you to the staff behind the scenes. You don't get to see them, lucky for you, but they do all the work that makes this happen. It would not happen without them, the setup that they do, and they are operating all kinds of machinery back there. I'm not even sure what all this does. There's all these gears and cranks. Let me and check. Dogs Let me find out. It's, it's very oh, wait, steampunk. Not. I'll say that, but <laughs> it looks great. They do all the graphics. They put in the videos. They put in a lot of work. All right, all right. And now, and come on. They're, they're good. They don't bro. even work in our Jeez. department. They don't even work in our <laughs> department. And you don't reek of musty patchouli and well-worn Birkenstocks. Patchouli. What did I say? Patchouli. Damn it. <laughs>